Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Oxford Preparatory Academy regular meeting of the Board of Directors, June 26, 2017, 5.30 p.m. closed session, 7.30 p.m. open session. Meeting location, Oxford Preparatory Academy, Chino Valley Campus, 5862 C Street, Chino, California, 91710. We have our two teleconference locations, Oxford Preparatory Academy, South Orange County Campus. Can, can they see us? Okay. Hello, everyone. Located at 20... 23000 via Santa Maria Mission Viejo, California, 92691, and Oxford Preparatory Academy, Saddleback Valley Campus, 22882 Lamont Drive, Lake Forest, California, 92630, and we can see you. Okay, welcome. The public, including public uh, attending a teleconference location, are invited to address the board regarding items listed on the agenda. Comments uh, on the agenda, the item will be... Okay, I'm going to this now. Accepted during consideration of the item or prior to the consideration of the item in the case of a closed session item. Please turn in your comment cards to the board secretary prior to the item you wish to speak on. Okay, preliminary. Let's go to the call of order. Roll call. Uh, Deborah Tarver. Present. Albert Diaz. Present. Naveen Adley. Present. Sandra Garner. Present. Andrew Vesti. Okay, approval of agenda for regular board meeting for June 26, 2017. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. And a second. A second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the agenda for our meeting. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. We have an item uh, tonight scheduled for information only. Uh, resignation of Mr. Andrew Vesti, Chairman and Member of the Board of Directors. Uh, our Secretary, uh, Mr. Diaz, will read it. This is a letter from Mr. Vesti. Dear Oxford Preparatory Academy Board of Directors, it is with a heavy heart that I must announce my resignation as a member of the OPA Board of Directors, effective today, June 23rd, 2017, at 5 p.m. When I joined the Board in October of last year, the organization was in turmoil and I knew that we needed to make many changes in a short amount of time. My desire to keep the school open for my children and for all the children that attended the school and staff fueled me to do whatever it would take to save the school. I have put my blood, sweat, and tears into this renewal process. I am honored to have worked alongside many bright people who also share a passion for education and their community. I thank you all for your dedication to the children of all three OPA campuses. What has transpired over the last couple of weeks has been disheartening. I will not allow my name, my integrity, to be drugged through the mud. Certain parents and staff from this organization have made false and demeaning comments about me. In an effort to protect my family and my career, I must submit my resignation. Sincerely, Andrew Vesti. And it's indeed with a heavy heart that we accept the resignation. We certainly understand. There were a lot of reckless comments that were made. And I, sometimes I don't think that people really understand the consequences of some of those comments. So, <laughs> we, uh, we owe this man an incredible uh, uh, gratitude for what he stepped into. Um, real heroes run toward the fire not away from it. And when he agreed at the time to come on the board, I want everyone to remember that out of 2,000 parents, six stepped up. Six. And he was one of them, and we were so lucky to have him. So he will be dearly, dearly missed by this board, and I'm sure by the entire community. That brings us to the next agenda item, the election of uh, a new board chair. Pursuant to the bylaws, Article 8, the officers of the corporation are chosen by the board of directors and serve at the pleasure of the board. It is recommended that the board either, one, appoint a new chairman of the board, two, appoint an interim chairman of the board, or three, continue to allow the secretary to chair the meetings of the board pursuant to the bylaws, Article 8, Section 8. Um, do I have a motion? I motion to make Sandra Gardner chair of the board. Do we have a second? I would like to comment before we move forward. Uh, but, but you can comment as soon as we have a second. <clears throat> okay. Then we'll open it up for discussion. Sounds is there a second? I'd like to actually open the discussion, if I may. So there is no second? No second. Okay. Yet. Okay, then we will proceed with discussion. Mrs. Adley? After you, sir. 
Um, I understand that uh, we need to have a, a chairman do mostly because of all the signatures that are required, the, the need to um, continue on with school business, so on and so forth. Is that my understanding? Certainly. But it, the other thing is to, when you have a vacancy on the board, it's similar to in December, if you recall, you had only three board members. Mm -hmm. Three. And you, and you appointed an interim um, uh, uh, executive director, and that's proper. There's no reason, reason to shrink from our responsibilities right. simply because we're operating with four. We've operated with four members many times, made big decisions many times with three. Oh, yeah. and uh, exactly. And we have many big decisions awaiting us, um, and we're not too sure exactly what those are going to be. It could be a school closure. Um, it could be a lot of things. So, yes. Okay. Yes. So I think there are a lot of things still open. Um, when Mike Delgado stepped down as chair, we operated for a few board meetings. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm, I don't know what I'm dust or what, but... Um, so we operated for several meetings before we brought on a chair. Go back and look at the notes. Um, I think in light of the uncertainty and so many things still up in the air, and that we don't have a full board with full representation of all schools, I think it would behoove us to hold off on making this decision. I would like to, to remind the board of one other thing. All of a sudden, when we decided to expand to seven members, it became about zip codes. This board has never operated by zip code. When this board decided to expand in Orange County instead of the Inland Empire, no one looked at anybody's zip code. No one complained that that board resided in the Inland Empire. And today, when we're facing closure of the only school in the Inland Empire, I don't hear any of our Chino parents complaining that we expanded our schools in Orange County and not here. So there's no option, there's no choice for our students of, as to where to go to school. Instead, we opened two schools in Orange County 10 minutes away from each other. But there were no complaints. What we need to do is we need to accept our responsibility of leadership, and as sad as it is that we have a vacancy, we need to move forward as leaders and do the most responsible thing. So I do have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? I'll second. Any more discussion? Sandra, I respectfully disagree with this decision. Okay. I think we should hold off on it. I do understand your desire to lead and move forward with this. I do, however, believe that there are still many things that are still open. The future of this entire organization. What are we doing? Are, do, are we down to two schools? Do we have three? What are we doing? I get what you're trying to do, and I am just going to put it out there. This is nothing against you, but I strongly believe that it is the right thing to do to wait. It is not going to set us back. I've looked at the bylaws. I know that the vice chair can continue to operate in the um, within the terms that the chair would have, so that is not going to set us back. So I just question the reason why we are wanting to make this decision tonight. Okay, thank I'd you. I'd like to comment. I'm going to add two things. Number one, I want to um, echo what she had said regarding the zip codes of board membership. I think that the, the term that we need to have equal representation assumes that we have unequal representation, assumes that the decisions of the board members today seem to favor one school or the other, that, that uh, a parent of, of one school or another will, will sway the direction and decisions of this board. Um, I've asked time and time again what decisions this board has made that seems to favor one school or another. Um, to suggest that adding other board members, or let me back up, I know that adding other board members will bring different opinions and diversity to the board, no doubt about that. But to, but to imply that um, adding a board member who's a parent of 
a, uh, of a representative school will somehow drastically change the direction of this board. The mission of this board should pretty much always be the same uh, regardless of the zip code or the school affiliation. Um, I, uh, I am for parent participation on a board or parent membership on a board. I think it's just, I, I personally think it's dangerous that we have a majority parents because it opens the door to, to this. To I'm not saying that we should have all parents on this board. I am not a parent and neither are the other two ladies next to me. So. But you were and I was. Right, but that was not the motion and, and I'm still here. I'm no longer a parent, right. I'm still here. <laughs> me too. No, I'm not you. Nonetheless. Um, I think I, I just I don't see that we you know I, I have to disagree that the decisions that we have they're only on that number so let's move on okay okay I think we should do a roll call vote Deborah Tarver aye Albert Diaz aye Naveen Adley I will not vote are you abstaining I am okay Sandra Garner aye Okay, uh, public announcement of reason for closed session. Conference with legal counsel anticipated litigation. The letters are getting small here. Government code section 54956.9, subsection D, subsection 4, two matters. Conference with legal counsel anticipated litigation. Government code section 54956.9, subsection D2, three matters. Conference with legal counsel, existing litigation, government code section 54956.9, subsection 9-1. Oxford Preparatory Academy versus Chino Valley Unified School District. Oxford Preparatory Academy versus Enlightened Learning Solutions. Public employee appointment, government code 54957, uh, interim executive director. Uh, public employee appointment, government code section 54957, uh, title Chancellor SOC. We will begin closed session at. Oh, pardon? Oh, we have comments. I am so sorry. Okay, we are not. Be we are not beginning closed session. Public comments. Uh, how many minutes are we going to have for public comments? How many do we have? Three. Three. We have four cards. Okay, that's. Okay, we'll Sorry, have five cards. Five cards. Okay, we'll have three minutes each. Okay, first up, Haley Hendrick. Hello, everyone. Um, good evening. My name is Haley Hendrick, and um, for this past year, I felt like OPA, or out of all the schools I've been to, felt like my home. This will be my fifth year moving. And for those who are going into kindergarten, want to be here to be with their siblings. For example, me and my sister, I want to be at the same school, not just because we want to be at the same school, just so that we can see each other every day. Yeah, because every year it's really hard for me to make friends, but I just felt like this year help has really been here for me. Thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. Alicia Hendrick. I'm sorry, Peter. Great job, great job. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm her mom. <laughs> <laughs> you should, uh, proud mom you are. Yeah, I try. Um, I really wasn't going to cry during this one. I did it first. Don't cry. Don't cry. Okay. <laughs> um, so I've said a million times, we've been bounced from school to school to school um, for various reasons. Um, and I'm so tired of doing it, but she's my kid, and 
I have a kindergartner coming up, and I wasn't born to quit, and I wasn't born to fight, and I'm extremely, extremely stubborn and proud, and um, if you tell me there's a chance, I just need a chance, and a glimmer of hope, and I'm going to fight like hell. And I'm going to keep reaching for that hope. I mean, seriously, August 15th. Well, actually, the 13th. This cattle starts on the 14th. So I guess i got to figure it out if we're going to be there or not. But up until, like, the hour of school, I'm going to be fighting and hoping. And if anybody says there's a chance, I want to go for it. And I'm going to urge you all to go for it. I don't care if it's an appeal or making a deal with freaking the district. <laughs> 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 Um, I don't care what it is, as long as we get a chance, whether it's a month or a year, or I want to be able to fight for a chance, because look at how much can be done in a little amount of time. So much can be done in a month, or in a week, or whatever. So I'm asking, and I'm begging to keep fighting until the last second, until they are burying us in our coffins. And even then, if you could reach your hand through that dirt, you just keep going. Um, I need something to fight for, and I'm going to be here fighting. Um, the last meeting I said, we really need to get our priorities in check as adults. I know a lot of adults, and uh, adults let us into this mess. A lot of adults let us into this mess. And it's one adult looking out for their own interests and fighting over petty stuff, and I don't care. I don't care about the district versus OPA or this OPA versus that OPA. I don't care anymore. Like, whatever people want, just get it done so that our kids can be first. Because we need to fight to save our kids and to save the school for our kids. And um, <coughs> the summer's chance. And I'm going to be there. And I hope you're all there, too, because we got to and that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Troy Stevens. A couple of tough acts to follow. Um, tonight, I, uh, I just want to come just to say a simple thank you to uh, everyone that's been involved. Um, thank you to the board for all of you stepping up and uh, taking these positions when our school was at the, the lowest point ever. Um, like Sandra said, there are six parents that stepped up to fill these board positions, and I don't think we could have asked for a better team than we've had on here to make the changes that have been made in the short amount of time that have been made. I don't think anyone can say whether you're for OPA or you're against OPA that OPA didn't fight. Um, not that it's over or wherever it happens to be at, but there was a lot of fight that was put in this by everybody. Um, all the changes that were made in such a short time, everything that Chino Unified has asked for, we have done. But there's always one more thing, right? We could do everything, and there's always one more thing. Um, so it's important for me to stand up here tonight to tell you guys thank you because I know how much keeping the school open means to you guys and means to our kids. I mean, you, you saw it five minutes ago. How it, how it can just crush these kids, and it's uh, very unfortunate. Um, it's very unfortunate that we're in a situation because of greed and that kids are suffering for what mistakes that adults made. Um, it's very unfortunate that the kids have to see us fighting so hard and still not getting to the end reward, but I just want the kids to know because maybe their parents will watch this or maybe some of the kids are here that you might not always get the outcome you're looking for when you put in the fight at the moment you need it to happen but you can't quit fighting you can never quit fighting no matter what happens from now until the 30th of june my fight's not done um i gotta keep fighting whether that's the people that chose to not renew our school or whether that's with the people that chose to put our school in this predicament there has to be a fight and there has to be a voice and I don't mind being that voice to help all of these people. Um, I know there's a lot of things said about certain people and, and this and that, but I encourage anyone who's speaking to come take that seat and put their pants on for five minutes 
and you might have a different outlook. So don't knock it till you try it because it's not the easiest spot to be in any of these positions. Uh, the attorneys, the board members, the staff, the teachers, but let's not, the parents, but let's not forget most importantly, the kids. Um, I don't think anyone besides the parents of those kids have really asked the kids how they're doing through all this, you know, and take a moment, talk to the kids, encourage them. But thank you guys so much. I really appreciate everything you're doing. Thank you, Joy. Lisa Barley. Good afternoon, board members. This is our second time being together. I have two things I want to bring to your attention. First, I would encourage the board. And let me introduce myself. I'm a parent at SSC. We've been a family member of the Oka family for five years now. Our son's going into fifth grade. And we have enjoyed every minute. Two things. One, I think the board in light of the situation we find ourselves in, the amount of resources it is going to take, that they need to seriously consider splitting the organization to now parallel the different paths that the schools are on. We have two schools which remain viable, but they are going to need the full force and the full efforts of all board members. Chino, with regard to the decisions that have to be made, that is going to be a full-time job and a half to get it back on track, if at all possible. But you need to give people hope. And the only way we can do that is with the greatest amount of integrity. Members of this board are seen as being in collusion with the former executive director. As long as that is the case, then you will have no hope, and you will not give the families here a fair shot at it. Your chances at the writ were very slim. Your chances on appeal are even slimmer. I told you before at the June 7 hearing, I wrote these orders nearly 20 years ago as an attorney for Los Angeles Superior Court. This is serious. If you have this organization at its heart, then you will step down and put in new board members and give these families a fighting chance. This district is not going to throw good money after bad. The FIGMAT report identifies $4.7 million that had been wandered, and there's more. We are under investigation, and this entire organization is at risk. South Orange County and Saddleback Valley may be next. Give us all a fighting chance. If members of this board are seen as being in collusion with the former executive director, it will bring us all down, and it's not fair. You send these parents on a fool's errand, and you know it. You know it. Their chances of survival are if the board members who are seen to have been in collusion are seen to have been appointed by the old board. Step down. Put your money where your mouth is if you care about these parents and you care about the children in them. Give them a fighting chance. Kamoza Kabandama. Hello, board members. <laughs> My name is Kamoza Kabandama. From all 1,200 students, thank you for everything you have done for our school the only school I know and have gone to. These are all hard and difficult times that I want to, and I want to thank you for not giving up on the school. Please continue fighting. We have families and a life outside of school, but you are here, and I thank you for doing that. I'm here looking forward to next school year at OPA, and us, you have a family, will stand by you every second of the way if you continue fighting for us. Thank you. Thank you. Are we going into closed session now? Okay. Okay, we're going into closed session at uh, 6.04. Okay, we're back in open session at 9.20. Um, only 50 minutes late. Sorry. Thank you, everyone, for your patience. Obviously, we had a lot uh, that we were dealing with. Um, we do have two report outs. Uh, Mr. Diaz will do the first part, and I will do the second part. Okay. Do you need to open... Need to do I an just, official open session. I, in the time. I just did the time. Yeah. 
Oxford Preparatory Academy would will pursue an appeal of Judge David. an appeal of Judge David Cohen's June 23, 2017 ruling on Oxford Prep's petition for writ of mandate and complaint for injunctive relief. This appeal will raise important issues of first impression that will broadly impact California charter schools regarding the importance of pupil academic achievement in charter renewal decisions. The effort will be backed by the significant financial support of California Charter Schools Association. Okay, the board is also directing our council to make an attempt at a settlement agreement with Chino Valley Unified School District. Okay. Okay, comments from the board? Mrs. Adley? Um, thank you all for coming out. This is not the crowd we left when we left this room. Um, it's really hard to have heard a no on Friday. Um, but I think we're moving forward and we're going to try and do what's right and what's great for this organization to keep it moving forward. Um, there's so much I want to say. We just I don't want to keep you up here all night. Um, I just want to say thank you. Um, my, thank you. My goal in all of this is to do the right thing. I teach my kids to act with integrity, with honesty, and to do the right thing in everything that they do. And that's what I do in sitting up here on this board. What I believe in my heart, I speak with honesty and with goodwill. I have no bad intentions of being up here. So, you know, I care about you all, and I just want you to know that I support this entire organization, and we're gonna do what we can to keep this going. Thank you. I know it's important, and I just really wanna echo exactly what uh, Ms. Atley uh, just said. Um, I think right now, um, Albert and Mr. Diaz has so much more to say, so I just kind of want to hand it over to him. But yes, we all echo what you said, and we really appreciate everything. And we're here to fight for you and for the families and our children. Yes. And before Mr. Diaz takes over, I'm also going to yield my time to him. Uh, for those of you who weren't here earlier, we did uh, read a letter of resignation from Mr. Andrew Vesti, our chair. Uh, and it's a very sad time for all of us here on the board, and I know it is for you as well. He's, he's, he did an incredible job providing leadership to get us through this difficult time. And so I want to yield my time to Mr. Diaz so that he, he has uh, some comments that he would like to share about, about Andrew. I'm saddened to have received the resignation of Mr. Andrew Vesti. Very few people outside the inner circle knew how truly significant his contribution was. When three new parents unexpectedly found themselves leading this organization in crisis, personally, I was terrified they would look to me to step up and be the chair. I would have done it because someone had to, but I wholeheartedly believe there is no way I could have done what he did and served this organization as well as he did. I believe without his dedication, commitment, and leadership, we would have accomplished far less in the last eight months, and his resignation will be a huge loss to this organization. As a decorated and well-respected police officer, he loaned us his reputation to this, he loaned, he, loaned, he loaned his reputation to this organization every time he represented us to our parents, to our staff, to our authorizers, to our stakeholders, and to the various educational and government officials who have supported us in the background. Um, I would like to think that no one was truly hoping for the outcome of his resignation, or nor that they consider this a victory. <coughs> Instead, I pray that we will sit back and reflect, that we consider how much damage our words and actions can have, 
that we remember that we can debate our viewpoints and, when applicable, agree to disagree without seeing the other as the enemy. That we remember that the true enemy are those who are actively working to close good schools. That ones that's the ones that we should be fighting are those whose greed, selfishness, and short-sighted pull the focus away from the true mission to provide the best possible education to our youth. Mr. Bessie, I hope you are listening or someone shares this audio with you. For myself, and for as much as I can speak, for the OPA organization, thank you. From the bottom of our heart, From the bottom of our heart, thank you for all you did for this organization. Thank you for all you did for the 2,600 OPA children and their families. Thank you. Okay. Um, comments from the Interim Executive Director, Mrs. Pasco. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being out here. Please know that we really appreciate all of your support during these very difficult times. Um, last week was really tough. Um, Judge Cohn denied our petition for a writ of mandate. But to all of you who traveled up to Sacramento and to the courthouses and here to board meetings countless times, giving your evenings, days, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we're moving forward. Um, we are preparing with working with Christy White, who's our end of the year auditor, and also handled the audit out, which was presented at State Appeal. They are going to be going back and updating our audit as soon as their contract is approved. Um, we had our eighth grade promotions, which were amazing at all our campuses. Um, and now all the kids are on summer break, although you can't tell from out here. <laughs> and congratulations to Andrew Stroke, who has accepted a contract as our managing director. Okay. <laughs> I thought the clapping was, was solid. <laughs> um, comments from the audi uh, audience on items not on the agenda? Do we have any? We have 16. 16? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the public, including uh, public attending a teleconference location, are invited to address the board regarding items not listed on the agenda. No individual presentation shall be for more than three minutes, and the total time for this purpose shall not exceed a total of 15 minutes. So that's like one minute each. Whatever the chairman decides. Okay. So we're going to ask you to keep it as brief as possible. Um, so that we can try to get this done in 15 minutes. Uh, we'd like to get out of here by midnight, if at all possible, tonight. Okay. Ordinarily, board members will not respond to presentations and no actions can be taken. However, the board may give direction to staff following a presentation. Please turn your comment card into the board secretary prior to the agenda item. Are we ready to go? I'm ready. Okay. Deanna Campagna. And I apologize for my entire day. Well, first of all, thank you. My name is Deanna Campagna. Rise with Lasagna. I had to do it one last time. I have just completed my 28th year of teaching. Oka was born in my living room. Sue Roach was not even there. In fact, you would not be here, but we're not for a group of dedicated educators who had a dream. The past year has been very horrible, but never have I felt embarrassed to be associated with OPA until the June 7th board meeting. Instead of supporting your sister school, you stabbed us in the back. You embarrassed us by your words and actions. A blowhorn, really? I get it. We're passionate about our school and we are scared. But please settle down and get your facts straight. While the board was in closed session tonight, we spent over an hour with Lisa Bartley, a parent from SOC. Turns out she's a very lovely lady. What we learned is most of your accusations are based on assumptions, lies, and rumors. Please entertain the thought that it is best to get your facts straight before you attack others. Remember, the fight to save Chino is a fight to save your OPA, our OPA. We must stay united. One last thought. It was shared with me tonight that we, OPA Chino, should not appeal. 
Go ahead. It's, it's a lost cause. We have no hope. Well, I disagree. If my fellow educators felt that way as they sat in my living room nine years ago, you would not be sitting here. All we have is hope, and that's a lot. I'm back. And touching on what she said, I'm going to quote my quote from last Monday, which Andrew Jackson said, one man with courage, it only takes one, and they make the majority. Okay? And another quote is, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. <laughs> We're scorned. Um, okay, so like what I talked about last Monday, we're going to talk a little bit about perspective and adults focusing on themselves rather than what this should be about. And thank you, Alberto Diaz, you talked about that, and I'm that's what I'm about. So um, this is not, this is so much bigger than Chino Valley. This is so much bigger than the entire OPA organization. This is about the right for charters to exist, which if people do not know, there is a huge fight going on every single day. Districts want us out, okay? Our survival, our fight, our success, um, our win, sorry, is your win, and it's the charter win, and it's a school win, and I, heaven forbid, hope nobody else finds himself in this position because it's awful, and I don't wish it on my enemy, but if you are, I will be there to support you until you are dead. I will not let it happen because we all deserve Time it and our children deserve it. And Four kids that come to the school, the school is everything for us and our family. And um, I'm literally glad that we have our OC family. I'm glad I got to know all of you guys personally. There's a lot of you I got to know all the whole way. And um, I just want to say thank you. And I really appreciate all that you've done for our family and for the OPA family. And I'm really glad to be a part of this, um, this OPA family here. And uh, this, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. And I really want to thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I changed my mind. <laughs> okay. In light of what was announced. Okay. <laughs> Karen Leeds. Those of you don't know me in Chino, I'm Karen Leeds and I'm the Honor Society President at uh, SOC. And I didn't plan on driving up to Chino tonight, but I was at work and decided to. And I'm grateful that I did because I got to know a lot of parents here who love their children and want the best for their children as we do at SOC. And sometimes we don't communicate things the best. Sometimes we have a different perspective than the next person. I do think that sometimes when wrongs are wrongs, Time for a second. Okay, I think we can go back. Okay, great. Thank you. My point is, I think sometimes when we do things wrong, we want our children to know that it's okay that we make mistakes, and for whatever mistakes we've made, we apologize, we learn from them, and we move on. I'm not pointing fingers. I'm not saying who made mistakes. I hope that we take it as a time to self-reflect. 
to understand what we've done, what I've done, what you've done, and for what that's worth, I hope that we can come together, that we can have conversations, that communication was started, that support is there, love is there, we want the best for our children, what that looks like, some of us don't know, but I do feel like if we come together and we're honest, that great things can happen. And I hope that moving forward, we're humble and we're um, honest, and I think that we have integrity, and we show our children what it looks like to fight for something that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Hector Sanchez. Uh, I'm a fifth grade champion here in Oklahoma. I just want to say thank you for all you've done. And um, wherever, wherever school I go to, or I just want to know that I'm a champion forever, and I'll support you to the end. Thank you. Thank you. This is at a teleconference location, Erica Kane. Well, originally my comments were going to be um, how saddened I was about the news, but. Um, uh, because without Opachino, frankly, none of us uh, at SOC or at Saddleback would be here. Um, so I applaud your efforts to keep fighting. I know this is much bigger than our schools um, here. Yet at the same time, if we want to move forward as one school and be stronger, I really think there needs to be quick action taken on some more representation um, from Orange County, from the Saddleback schools and from SOC, and I think the, the reason for the discord is because there isn't any. And um, I know that a lot of attention has been paid for um, trying to save your school, and if I were in your shoes, I would want to do everything I could to save um, my, my, my kid's school. Um, but I would just love to see um, just more action, or at least something, to throw us a bone here. Um, it seems, I, I mean, I've heard things, and, and forgive me if, if my comments are made in complete ignorance, but I'm here, you know, and I'm here to learn, Hi. and I would love to see, um, I mean, I've heard of people applying, applying and not getting any response of, or receipt of their applications. Um, it's just unprofessional. Like, if people are trying to get involved and you're not even responding. So, um, yeah. <laughs> From, from SOC, Kevin Mueller. SOC, Kevin. To the board members, I'll echo here. Uh, my thanks for all your efforts. I'm primarily here just to stay informed on everything, but also at my wife's BS, who last week, or maybe perhaps earlier this week, sent me a text with five really sad emojis upon hearing that this mall was going to be taking South Orange County. That's South Orange County campus. And so um, she was very much uh, loved here, and we're going to miss her, including my twin girls. Thank you. From South Orange County, Ashwin Agarwal. Um, I, I, I honestly had a different speech plan prior to hearing about the, the Chino appeal going forward, which, which I think is a good thing. Um, I respect the decision you made. Confident it was done in the best interest of all charter schools um, statewide. Um, I, there's a couple of things I think you as a board need to address. If, number one is putting in an executive director as soon as possible, somebody that's experienced, that's done it before, that knows the lay of the land. Um, and then second is continuity at our schools, particularly the school, South Orange County campus, which, which is where my children go. Um, the gentleman that just spoke mentioned Dean Loha. Um, I think we've seen a lot of turnover at the campus and, and we need to address this as soon as possible. Um, I also ask that, that you as a board be as transparent with this as possible in terms of students and the parents. Um, I think there, there's a lot as you, you as a board need to do behind closed doors. I have a lot of board experience in the corporate world, but I think some of that needs to be translated and, and communicated to the parents in terms of what's going on. There's minutes that can be published, et cetera, that you can still do from a legal standpoint. I think- Your time that, is up. It, it's gonna go a long way for, for, for the entire parent population to get them comfortable with the decision you're making. Um, you've had a lot of turnover on the board. There's been a lot you've been through and it's commendable how you handled it, but I think we just need, we need more transparency. Thank you. Thank you. Paulo Ramirez. 
we're from. This will be short and sweet. I just really want to thank each and every one of you and Mr. Vesti that's no longer here, um, and Mr. Crow, of course, <laughs> for all the hard work and sacrifice that you guys put into saving our school. And you know, it's not over. And to hear that you guys are putting the appeal through, that's just your character. It just shows each and every one of your characters and it exemplifies what OPA is to us. And it's such an example to our children to not give up to what they believe is right. And I just want to thank each and every one of you to your faces because I love your faces. You guys are beautiful people. And <laughs> we, we just wouldn't be here where we're at. I mean, it, it would have been done a long time ago if it wasn't for you guys and all the <clears throat> stepping up that you guys did. Um, with the previous board, and in my opinion, and I know a lot of our opinion, you guys are very transparent. Um, we have minutes, audio, we have the website that anyone can check in, kind of check the minutes and what you guys are transparent about. So, thank you very thank much. Thank you. From Saddleback, Michelle Julian. Uh, hello, board. I just wanted to thank you for your time. I will admit my remarks are a bit unprepared, but I wanted to take this opportunity to address an issue that is very concerning. Um, as a new parent to OPA, I've been absolutely appalled at the stories that I have heard regarding bullying that is occurring on each of the campuses. Um, even more concerning is that when I researched this, I could not find that OPA even has an anti-bullying policy. While I think it is great that we are addressing an anti-cyberbullying policy, it is absolutely not acceptable that we do not have an anti-bullying policy to enforce. Treating others with respect is a standard that everyone at OPA is held to. However, without a formal policy in place, the consequences of not following that rule cannot be enforced. I honestly do not know if it is an issue with the administration, not handling the situations um, firmly enough, but since a policy does not even exist, we cannot request for the consequences to be enforced. I don't know of any school in this day and age that does not have an anti-bullying policy, and I believe it is time for the board to step up and put something in place immediately. Thank you again for your time. <laughs> look into maybe where she's looking because if she can't find it, who else can't find it? Because we do have one. Okay. Fair enough, but she's obviously looking, so has made effort to look. Michael Arroyo. Or thank you very much for all that you're doing. I just want to say nine, nine years ago when we were starting the school, I was a part of another charter school. I was on board and we were fighting for our lives. The, the district denied us, the county denied us, we went to the state, and they couldn't get a vote. Our charter ended, we only had one year of results. They wanted to see two years because they gave us only a short time to, to be in, in uh, operation. Well, after our charter uh, expired in June, we went back in August with the results in hand, and they removed us. They said, I don't know how you're going to do it, but even though the school's already closed, your number's gone, we have to get you a new one, whatever we gotta do, but here's your approval. We were renewed after the fact. Just wanted to let, let you guys know that. It is possible to, uh, possibly even, I don't know, I'm not an attorney, possibly while we're do, doing this appeal, it may be possible to set a date with the state to go back and work on that. Thank you. Thank you. Vanessa Okamoto. Good evening. I just quickly want to come up and thank you personally. Um, it's been quite a year, and I just feel like everyone in this community has gone above and beyond, like from the board. You come in here, and you just get to work, and you're willing, you're dedicated, tireless. You just don't stop. What an example, down to the administration, where Mr. Crow, I mean, it's just amazing in this community what I've seen and what an example from the teachers for my children to be a part of this. 
and this is what I want to instill in each of them, is that you don't stop and you never quit. You get knocked down and you get up again. Because this is what it's about when you believe in something so much. It's worth it. It's worth everything that we've gone through. And if I had to do it all over again for these past three years for my children to be here, I'd do it in a heartbeat. I do it for three days for them to be here because Time. that's what I feel. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Samantha Odo. My family and I would like to thank you all from the bottom of our hearts for all, the, all of your hard work this year. We appreciate all the time and effort you have put into cleaning up the past and putting a strong foundation in place for our future of all of the champions. We know that the sacrifices you have made in your personal lives and um, that, has, that has to be commended, especially being away from your families, missing dinner time to be at as many as 26 board meetings since you guys have been in place as well as having to listen to complaints and even yelling from parents because they just don't understand the procedure. For that, I apologize and also thank you for your patience. I'd like to also thank you from the bottom of my heart for putting in a very extensive and thorough hiring process for our next executive director. In the midst of what we are going through with the renewal of Chino Valley, I appreciate the transparency and the vetting process of this role. I'm so glad that unlike our previous board, this board is going through the application interview process so that the most qualified person will sit in that role and because of that, there will be no questions about qualification. As a Chino, as a parent of Chino Valley, I really appreciate the dedication of this board to the renewal of Chino Valley, but most of all to all OBA campuses and champions because we are all one family and families stick together. Thank you. Thank you. Melkor. Mad respect, first off. Second, I just wanted to speak to the SOC parents. I am an original OPA parent. I am the original vice president of the Convocation Committee. I was here when it was presented to us about opening that campus and the sacrifices we would have to make for you to do so. We had a new school. We were trying to get up and running. We were being told, give us patience, it's our first year. Give us patience, it's our second year. Give us patience, we're up for renewal. Give us patience, we're opening new schools. And we did that for you because it was presented to us that how can we turn kids away from this program? Parents are asking me in Orange County, please, I want what you have. And how can we deny them that? And so we as OPA Chino said, you're right, we can't deny them. But you know what's worse than not having something is having something and having it taken away. So please try and understand and have some compassion and stick and fight for us like we did for you. Thank you. Thank you. That is all. That is all? That is all. Ooh. Nicely done, everyone. Okay, we're going to move to the uh, item scheduled for consent. I'm going to pull the warrant report for May 2017 because we still haven't approved the one from April, and I'd like to see them both together. So, Jennifer, if you could bring those back at the next meeting, I, I would appreciate it. So, uh, do I have a motion to approve the consent items? Make a motion. Okay, Debbie is motion. Do I have a second? Jennifer, did we get the last final minutes? Because I didn't get a chance to see that. Your six seventeen. We need all the others. Do you have a copy? Sorry, I don't have it in my pack because I didn't grab it. Okay. Do you have it in yours? They have it. Yeah, yeah. Solved, Would you like us to take the, that I off? Approve, I I had already read and uh, was comfortable with the 59, 518, and 619. Um, but if the 67 wasn't ready and I wasn't, so it wasn't online, so I didn't get a chance. Okay, to let's go it. ahead and pull the 67. If you could bring that to, at the next meeting. Is that okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So I'll. Second, okay. with the amendment right. that it's approving the 59, 518, and 619. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay. Uh, presentations, financial update for May 2017. Andy, you've been here all night. Thank you so much. <laughs> Charter impact. He's actually been here all day. All day? He's been here all day. I've been here since 9.30. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Um, 
fine. It's thank no you, thank you. It's no problem, man. <laughs> Can you resend his? Uh, his uh, um, I will make this very brief, unless you have questions, okay. because uh, in the interest of time, and I know we have other agenda items too. Um, the May uh, financial report, the last time we presented, was the March report, because um, the April one financial uh, was sent to the board, but not presented at this meeting. Um, in summary, there's a 28 pages, uh, 28 page report, which you're welcome to ask questions about, but on the second page is a summary. Uh, let me just read a few highlights there. Um, all three school, schools are expected to finish 16, 17. Next page, if you're going to do one more year. Like, and I can read it for you. Um, all three schools are expected to finish the year with significantly positive surpluses. Um, I'll first mention Chino. Chino is expected to end 16 17 with a surplus of 1.55 million, which is 13% of expenses. Um, the year end surplus was uh, that's $513,000 better than the last time I was up here. Um, the uh, We had, as you may recall, um, at that presentation, I said that we were still holding some significant conservatism um, as we were still in the midst of cleaning things up and making sure we understood what had happened in the prior the first six months of the year, and now we're fairly certain we understand that, so uh, our forecast is significantly better. Um, the 1617 uh, surplus is also also $718,000 better than the plan. Um, but uh, as I said, positive $1.55 million. South Orange County is expected to end the year with a surplus of $728,000 or 11% of expenses. Um, that's also better than we told you last time, about $173,000. Um, and overall, it's $312,000 better than plan and Saddleback is expected to end the year with a surplus of 1.39 million or 32% of expenses, um, about $132,000 better than we thought it might be last time. Um, the fund balance, uh, which is a reflection of assets minus liabilities and the general long-term health of the organization, um, Chino has a fund balance of 2.97 million, 33% of current year's expenses, South Orange County is 2.23 million, which is 34%, and Saddleback at 1.38 million, which is 31%. So all above 30%, which is very healthy as an organization. Uh, the final point I was going to make, unless you would like to go into any detail on any schools, um, is cash balances. We forecast the end of the year cash balances. Um, all three are expected at the end of the year with, with adequate cash. Chino is, uh, from a percentage standpoint, is the lowest at 1.06 million, which is 12% of current year's expenses. Typically, we would recommend targeting 15, at least 15 and sometimes 20% of expenses on an ongoing long-term basis to weather seasonality and also um, budget downturns in the or bad economies or whatever. Um, South Orange County is expected to end with 1.7 million, which is 26%, uh, very healthy, and Saddleback at 1.18 million, which is also 20, which is even slightly more, 27%. The total organization is expected to end year with $3.9 million in cash. Thank you. And again, another 26 pages, which I'm happy to answer if you have any questions. Okay. Otherwise, I'll leave it up to you. Okay, very good. And we will deal with those as we get to those items. That's okay, with everybody. Okay. Um, under, uh, we're going to pull the Gilbert Associates and the Christie White Associates. Is that correct? Okay. Uh, items for information: Governance Committee update. Um, we are very excited to report that we do have our advisory councils. The uh, election results uh, have been reported in both South Orange County. And in Saddleback, congratulations to everyone who will be serving on the advisory council. Chino uh, will be announced um, when we know what our situation is. <laughs> um, but the election is complete there, too. Okay? So congratulations to all the winners. 
Um, finance committee update. Uh, Naveen, do you have anything? I don't have anything on the finance committee, but I do want to give an update on the additional board members and the interviews we've been doing. I know that has come up several times, and I, I apologize for not bringing that up earlier. Um, we did our first round of interviews. We're doing one more round, not a second, but just another round of additional folks we're interviewing. And once we get that finalized and have identified and finalized candidates, we would bring them forth to the board for a vote. So if you have not been contacted, that does not mean yes or no. It just means we're trying, it's, it's difficult to schedule everyone's time. So it's taking a little bit longer than we had anticipated. So please bear with us. Thank you. Okay, moving on to items for discussion and action. Approval of the 2017-2018 July 1st final budget for Oxford uh, Preparatory Academy Saddleback Valley. Oxford Preparatory Academy is required to adopt the final budget for the upcoming fiscal year by July 1st of each year, including a projection of the upcoming year and subsequent two fiscal years, demonstrating fiscal solvency throughout. Mr. Stern, you're up again. So as was just mentioned, the board is required to adopt the budget. Um, we're doing Saddleback Valley first, right? Yes. We, um, we had prepared budgets last week for presentation that assumed that Chino might be uh, open and instead we're adopting budgets here assuming that the Chino school will not be operating. It does change a uh, number of the expenses and a little bit of the revenues, which I'll tell you a little bit about. Um, the, uh, this is our first page, and again, I will go quick. Uh, please stop me, I'm going to talk quick, um, and I will go through these pages quickly, but if you want me to pause saying where, please let me know. Um, there were minor changes uh, in the final budget that was adopted. Um, the the uh, state adopted minor changes in uh, state funding on a per student basis. Um, it doesn't add up to very much per ADA, which is about $5 to eight dollars a child but it's um an average of about hundred and twelve thousand dollars above the 16 17 level um there was a uh, in the last three months while the legislature has been wrangling over the budgets um there were some one-time funds that were in last year um that went were in and then back out and then at the end came back in um and they will add up to an additional eighty four thousand dollars which are included in this budget um those uh uh, for Saddleback, they did not receive those kinds of funds in the prior year um, or the, in this current year because they're based on a prior year ADA. Um, I will just give you the budget summary here. 17-18 um, enrollment is assumed to be 593 students, which is the current enrollment. We have assumed in the budget 97.5% um, attendance, um, which is 578. Um, this past year, those, the attendance level was 98.8%, so we built in some level of conservatism. Um, if the att attendance is the same, that would yield an additional $60,000 of revenue, so that's built in. Um, we've assumed an annual budget surplus of $380,000, which is 7.5%. That's a, about a million dollars less than the budget, than the, than the surplus that is in this year. Um, that's partly due to some level of lower revenues, which I will talk about, and a significantly level of higher re uh, expenses. So $339,000 lower revenues assumed than the current forecast and 669 higher expenses. Um, the fund balance will, is expected to be, again, healthy at 34.8, and the cash balance at 1.87 million, 37%. I will go quickly over this page, basically, um, average enrollment in the, in the current year was 593 and we're projecting in this budget 593 again. Um, we're projecting, as I mentioned, a slightly lower 88 percentage as a, as a conservatism um, and that, that translates into eight fewer ADA. On the following page um, is about revenues. Um, I apologize that this is small for you, but let me just give you the overview. Um, total revenue for the current year is projected to be 5.767 million, and we are budgeting at this point 5.4 million. Uh, I mentioned to you some level of conservatism on the um, ADA, um, but there are um, two other things. Uh, given that this school was in its first year, there was 300, that's the second line federal revenue, 
there was $375,000 of a startup grant available for the first year that is not available in the second year. Um, and the only other change here is at the bottom, uh, which is called other local revenue. And the biggest piece there is the champion village revenue that we have assumed from a conservative standpoint less for next year than we received this year. So that's a second level of conservatism. Stop me anytime, but otherwise I'll keep going. I've read through this, I'm good. We're good, we're good. Yep. I'm good. We're good. All right, good. Uh, expense summary, there's two pages of the expense summary. Basically the, the table is the same on both pages. Um, there's the $669,000 increase uh, so total projected expenses in the current, uh, the coming year's uh, projected budget is to be 5.049 million. Um, the biggest changes are in salaries and compensation. Um, in the salaries area, there's one additional teacher plan. Um, there is a, because of uh, the assumption of Chino closing, um, there are a number of shared uh, personnel across those schools and Saddleback had a lower percentage at 22% of those shared expenses last year, and at this year, it's close. It's uh, I think we put 40%. That's right, 40%. So almost double in terms of shared expenses, um, which raises uh, increases the compensation overall, and benefits are higher partly because of the increased allocation, but also because of the cost of stirs and purs has will be a dramatic increase this coming year, which added $150,000 to the budget. Um, on the following page, um, no real significant differences um, in the books and supplies, sub-agreement services, professional services facilities, you can see um, that they can't mostly cancel out. And the biggest change, as I mentioned, was up in the top on the compensation area. Um, following page is just a summary of all that, which is the surplus deficit is projected to be $380,000 which is about, as I said, a million dollars less than the forecast this year, um, but with a healthy fund balance. And the following page just shows the what we expect to have with cash. Oftentimes, um, cash bounces around, especially when the amount is slow, but in this case, the amount is a substantial amount of cash to the organization, and some of that monthly bouncing doesn't have a significant impact on the operation or the health of the organization. And with that, uh, I present on the last page is a five-year projection, which I can't get my pages to turn here. Um, a five-year projection showing uh, an average of about three or two hundred fifty to three hundred fifty thousand dollars a year in surplus. This assumes some modest increases in compensation, some modest increases in other kinds of expenses. It projects out the funding levels of the state as they are currently uh, legislated and shows the organization is expected to remain and growingly healthy over the next five years. Any questions? I think the structure of this is that the board is voting before I go to the next one. Yes, okay. that is the structure. Okay. okay, any questions? Can I get a motion to approve the 2017-2018 July 1st final budget for Oxford Preparatory Academy, Saddleback Valley? I'll make a motion. Okay, it's been motioned by Mrs. Adley. Do I have a second? A second. Seconded by Ms. Tarver. Any discussion? No, All good. of those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstained? Okay, it passes. Now we're going on to number two, approval of the 17-18 budget for South Orange County. That's correct. Uh, the first page is primarily the same, um, although the amount of the budgeted expectation for the one-time funds is slightly different because there's a different level of, of en uh, enrollment. Um, on the following page, we have assumed enrollment at 841 students with 98% ABA. Um, six, the 16, 17 year with an enrollment of 816 for the board's information, we have assumed 25 additional students that would enroll on, in the independent study program at the uh, SOC that might come from the Chino uh, school. Um, so with, with the Chino, again, we've made an assumption that Chino is not operating and therefore that's the structure of the budget and there's capacity at the SOC school to handle more independent study students and the assumption is that some might transfer. Um, 
the uh, budgeted surplus of 225,000 um, relative to a 7, 7, 16, 17 year of 728,000. Um, that is about 500,000 higher, or lower, I'm sorry, that's related to $600,000 higher expenses, partially off, uh, offset by 100, about $100,000 additional revenues. Um, and we'll talk about that. Uh, the funding fund balance and the cash balance are equally healthy to the uh, Saddleback Valley School. Um, I won't uh, spend any time, much time on this. You'll notice the 816 and the 841, assuming about 98% attendance. Um, so you, see, you can see the impact of that. Um, the revenue um, is about $100,000 more. Um, the biggest change is in the first line, which is the regular LCFF funding. Um, and, uh, but that's, it was actually $313,000 higher is what our expectation is. Um, but that's offset by the fact that, that last year, 16, 17, included 176,000 from a prior year adjustment at the state, which are the prior year adjustments are not, never planned to be um, in the budget. Otherwise they wouldn't be prior year adjustments. Um, the uh, expense summary um, is uh, projected, as I said, a total $600,000, so sorry, $600,000, um, all of that, in fact, more than that 600 is from um, salaries and benefits. Um, there are an assumption of $130,000 of stipends that was not in the budget last year, um, wasn't incurred in the budget last year because it had been accrued in the prior year, so therefore not incurred this year but is included for the 617-18 year. There are two teacher positions being added. Um, and as I mentioned, in the same way, there's a higher allocation of those uh, shared positions that in the that last in the 16-17 year was 33% and is projected or assumed to be 60% in this year. So almost double of any of those shared positions. Um, and STRS and PERS um, is expected to be about $200,000 higher. Um, than this past year um, at, for the same two reasons, higher allocation of the shared position as well as the uh, impact of the uh, state. I'm talking very quickly, the, the last uh, um, the other expense page here, um, the same things we've mentioned before on the other page, that we're budgeting a slight, low, slightly lower in terms of legal expenses, but nothing material other than the compensation um, that doesn't balance out. Um, Can I ask a just a quick question? Sure. We're adding two teacher positions. Is that that we're growing one of the class levels? Uh, Mrs. Pasco, is that why we're adding two teacher positions? I have to go back and look at how we have it spread out. I think we had some part times oh. in IS, and so we're getting full times. So. Oh, okay. Thank you. Sure. Um, uh, as I mentioned, the surplus is expected, projected to be 225,000 um, relative to a 16-17 forecast of 728,000. In all three cases, though, I meant even at 225, um, in, in all three budgets that I presented to this board the, uh, all this year, all three schools significantly beat their, their budget. So assuming not that we know what will happen and I don't have a crystal ball, um, but if they say if similar kinds, then, then they, uh, similar actions happen, then they would uh, be well above that. Um, the cash is steady and growing throughout the year in our projection. And similarly, the uh, five-year forecast is um, a uh, somewhere between $150,000 and $300,000 surplus each year and growing to a healthy 40% plus of uh, fund balance. Questions? That's good. I hope it's good. Okay. Let me make it very clear. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your efforts. Uh, any more discussion? Mm -hmm. I just want to say thank you very much. I know this took several iterations to get us to this, and it was me calling you and saying make more changes. Um, and Denise was very instrumental in this. So thank you both. I really appreciate it. And um, you did a great job. I love this summary. It looks awesome. So thank you. Denise, I appreciate that, but Denise is calmer than I am, as you can expect. <laughs> <laughs> and not to underemphasize under your efforts, too. Thank you so much. They did all the work.
Uh, can I get a motion to approve the 2017-18 July 1st final budget for Oxford Preparatory Academy, South Orange County? I'll make a motion. Okay, so moved. Do I have a second? I have second. second. All second. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Any abstention? Okay, it passes. We're going to pool number three, moving on to number four. Approval of resolution 2017-004, determining to spend the Oxford Prep South Orange County Education Protection Account monies in accordance with Article 12, Section 36. Monies received by Oxford Prep South Orange County from the Education Protection Account shall be spent as required by Article 12, Section 36 of the California Plans Constitution. The spending determinations on how the money will be spent shall be made in open session of a public meeting of the Governing Board. This is the Andy Stern Show, isn't it? You're up, he's been here. Yeah, okay, you're up right? again. Okay. This this is one of the most mundane things that you will do, um, and that I have to present. Um, but the uh, state aid funding has a set of complicated parts that all add up to whatever the total is the state wants to give you, and then they decide how to allocate those. And one of those allocations is the education protection account funds, that are based on a level of tax and taxes. Um, the um, this. Uh, is, as, a, as you said, is required to be stated in public. Um, the South Orange County, which was out with the first one, by the way, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Did yeah. you say yes? Yeah. So yes. yeah, this is in Chino, this is South Orange County, right. yes. Okay. Um, the, the amount of education protection account funds this year are, are projected to be 164836 It's a very small amount out of the $6.3 million of state funding. Um, however, there is required to be shown that these funds are being not being spent on administrative costs and only being spent on teaching, and so that's what this does. So, okay. And then you're supposed to vote. Okay. No, no. Okay. Can I get a motion to approve resolution? Actually, before that, before yes. that, I you know when I I read this whole thing and I'm like, okay, we're supposed to discuss how we're going to spend it, and then I've got a sign here that says this is how we agreed to discuss on how to spend this, but I'm still didn't follow the whole thing. Well, here, uh, let me tell you what. Let me give you a little bit more, although I don't like. We want to. I know. Because because I want to. Okay. So the the state funding has um, you put it, you put a bunch of inputs in include mostly enrollment and unduplicated percent and out spits uh, five or six different allocations of things and one of them is this and it's, a, it's one of the smallest of them and you are obligated to at the end of the year report how you spent your money and some funds are from the state and from the federal are granted based on um, how many kids you have, some are based on um, special ed for example did you actually spend it on and what did you spend it on you have to report it on special ed this is a small piece that the state says i want to see that you only that you spent a certain amount of money which is teacher salaries and benefits on this particular thing because if you put it here that would prove that you couldn't put it somewhere else and the auditors look at it but it is uh, where did we put it where does it, it show the certificate itself yeah. you see it on the last page of this um that's what that it is basically $129,000 or whatever that says, okay. plus 27 percent of allocated benefits for those people. Okay. Now, now this last page makes more sense to me. Thank you so much. <laughs> hey, I got to sign this, so I know. I don't mean, no, no. Ask all the questions you want. Thank okay. You. Can I get a motion to approve resolution 2017-003, determining to spend the Oxford Prep South Orange County Education Protection Account monies in accordance with Article 13, Section 36. I'm not sure. Okay, we have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. We're going to move on to number five, approval of resolution 2017-005, determining to spend the Oxford Prep Saddleback Valley Education Protection Account monies in accordance with Article 13, Section 36. Monies received by... Oxford Prep Saddleback Valley for the Education Protection Account shall be spent as required by Article 13, Section 36 of the California Constitution. Spending determinations on how 
the money will be spent shall be made in open session of a public meeting of the governing board. Pre and this is presented again by Mr. Stern. Yes, and I'm, I'll, uh, last one was short, and I'll make this one even shorter. Uh, exactly the same issue of Saddleback Valley's allocated amount is 120550 which is allocated to certificate and salaries in the same way, and it's shown on the last page. Yes. Yep. Looks good to me. Thank you so much. <laughs> Well, that was short. Okay. okay. And I'll make a motion. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the resolution 2017-004 determined to spend the Oxford Prep Saddleback Valley Education Protection Account monies in accordance with Article 13, Section 36? I'll make a motion. It's been so moved. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Moving on to number six. Approved contract for, is that the, Mr. Stern, are you done? No, Mr. Crow, no, that's Ms. Crow. Mr. Ms. Crow. I know. <laughs> Mr. Stern, I wanted to see. He can go home now. He can go home now, can't he? Yeah, he can't go home because he's living here right. Oh. oh. We need to hurry up. <laughs> okay. And Mr. Crow's gone, so I don't no, know what no, you're going to do. There he is. There he is. He's, okay. he's worked too hard on this to leave early. Okay, so right. here we go. This one here is... Um, to approve the contract for Revolution Foods in accordance with the National School Lunch Program. In accordance with the National School Lunch Program, Oxford will contract with Revolution Foods from 8117 to 73018 to provide meals on all campuses. Presented by Mr. Crow. Here you go. So this is our contract for a food service management company. Uh, we went through the uh, request for all the process, the RFP process. Uh, we published it uh, in the Orange County Register on two different weeks. Uh, we had a mandatory tour of our SOC and Taliban facilities. Three vendors uh, attended the tour. Uh, only one chose to submit a bid. That is a bid you have in front of you from Revolution Foods to provide uh, lunch service to any and all campuses that exist next year, and they will be in compliance with the National School Lunch Program. Uh, just some highlights. It's a one-year uh, contract with four one-year renewals that each party can take into account. Um, when and if you approve this, this still needs to be sent to the California Department of Education to approve. So we've worked with them to make sure the contract is, is above board. Uh, and once they approve that, and we can really start having a conversation about being in the National School Lunch Program, but this is a key component of it. Um, what we asked for in this process was for Revolution Foods to bring the workers to, to staff during the, the uh, lunchtime. Um, we met with them, we walked them through the fact that we have four lunch periods. It's a long process. Uh, they're very well aware of where we sit. This proposal is for breakfast and lunch. So there will be a breakfast option and a, a lunch option. Um, for, at the SOC campus, this is for three meal servers, and at Saddleback, it's for two meal servers. Uh, they, they manage the payments, uh, they handle the process, uh, so they're kind of a one-stop shop. Um, essentially how it works for anybody who's interested, uh, there's, we, we serve lunches, and for people who uh, qualify for free and reduced uh, prices, we receive cash reimbursements uh, from the government. Um, if you're interested in the details, you can come talk to me afterwards about what the poverty level is and how you qualify, but essentially on July 1, we will send out a, um, that's when we start collecting information on the um, family income level, how you fill it out, that's how you qualify either for a free or reduced lunch uh, meal. Uh, at this point, we anticipate breakfast costing $2 and lunch costing $3.50, so that gives you your whole your whole meal. Uh, we had a taste testing at the Saddleback campus. Uh, we had 20 people give input on the offerings. People were very, very pleased with, with uh, what they brought. So this is uh, for you, for us to participate in the National School Program. Okay, thank you. <coughs> did you get to do the taste testing as well? I did not, no, no, I did not, I wish. <laughs> Okay, do I have a motion to approve the contract with Revolution Foods in accordance with the National School Lunch Program? Make a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? And when will the parents be able to sign up for this? I Time to begin. Yeah, beginning we'll, of the school year? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get everybody on board before the school year starts. That way we can get ordered and done. Okay. Hopefully it's the first day of school. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone aye. opposed? Any abstentions? OK, 
okay, it passes. We're moving on to number seven, public hearing on local control accountability plan for Oxford Preparatory Academy, Saddleback Valley. This will be a real quick hitter. Uh, the local control accountability plan is something that uh, is required by us. There's a new funding formula. It's been around for three or four years. The local control funding formula. Uh, we ask for your input on the parent survey. So thank you to all of those who um, submitted uh, forms. Shout out to SOC because you guys have the highest uh, response rate, so we appreciate that. Um, and we'll go through real quick what it looks like for Saddleback, um, what we reported out for the 2016-17 school year, and what we anticipate for 2017-18. Our goals are the exact same for all, all four schools. You can't really see this. Uh, but the first goal is around academic performance. Our kids will perform as good as or better than uh, Shawnee schools. The second one, there's a welcoming learning environment where all students feel valued. The third one, we shall engage all stakeholders to maintain a positive school climate. And the fourth one, we shall promote parental involvement. So those are our goals, uh, and then we track our progress towards it. Uh, for Saddleback, this being the first year, we put a number of things in place that we wanted to have happen. A, uh, using the interim assessment system three times a year, being able to give materials uh, for the classrooms, and we had budgeted twelve thousand four hundred dollars for this. Uh, and what we actually spent was fourteen thousand seven hundred forty-one, so very close to what we, we said we were going to spend. Uh, for, for Saddleback, uh, an issue of concern was the truancy rate. So the number of students who had uh, a high level of unexcused absence or tardies at Saddleback, it was over 6%. So that's much higher than we'd like it to be. Uh, you have to remember that uh, Saddleback does not have an independent study program. And so there could be some contributing factors here. So there's a little data to dive into. But one of the things that we're talking about moving forward with Saddleback is working on the truancy rate. For This is the second goal. I apologize for the welcoming environment. Uh, they had budgeted five thousand dollars. We actually spent forty-four thousand. So that's a large difference. That difference is much more than any other of the campuses. So we think it was a, an accounting error on on the budgeted piece because that is not commensurate with what we had in either the Chino campus or the Orange County campus. Um, for the fourth one, the fourth one again is uh, parental involvement. We have budgeted $3,245. Those are for uh, marketing fees, dues and memberships. We spent a little more than double that. Uh, you'd always rather spend a little bit more than a little bit less because you get a certain number of funds and you have to spend all of them. Now, so that was our 2016-17. Really, this is forward-looking 2017-18. So for Saddleback, uh, one of our components, uh, because we had a higher percentage of English learners than we anticipated, is to uh, embedding our ELD standards, English language development, into the curriculum, as well as having our organization-wide uh, LPAP coordinator. So that's a focus for us at Saddleback. At Saddleback, we don't have um, official results yet, but we will put in there that wherever we are this year in ELA and in math, uh, we will just increase by hopefully 4% and then 2 more percent to that and then 2 more percent to that so that we get a baseline for accountability. For the second goal, uh, and uh, we had a parent speak from the Saddleback Valley campus around the bullying issue. So um, we are already kind of have some address in here, implementing positive behavior intervention and support. We want to ensure that every kid feels welcome. So we already have this identified. And again, one more plea to all of you, next year when we do this end of the year survey, please fill it out because we do, we do take that into consideration. So putting in um, uh, PBIS, which is positive behavior and support. And we talked about the truancy rate. We're trying to get down to about 4% for in three years. So um, we definitely should be able to get into that. And then the final one, uh, I just want to commend um, the Saddleback families on being very involved uh, this year. 65% of them participated in one or more meetings on the campus. 39% uh, participated in the family survey. Again, we'd like it to be a little bit higher. And then we had 63% of families come to at least one Oprah Award or trimester award. So that's a great number. We want to continue that, that piece. Uh, at Saddleback, the monies that we get that have to be spent on this is about $121,000. So those are the monies that we have to account for. We have to show that we are 
uh, supporting all of our students, but especially our, uh, our, our community. Yeah. So that is Salvat. Hmm? That's the piece for Salvat. Okay, thank you. Any questions for the board? You need to open it up to the audience. So this is I will do that yeah. too. Yes. Okay. Do we have any comment? Do we have any comments from the board? I mean, from the board, from the audience? Okay, hearing that, yes. Sure. Just about the accounting error, um, when is that going to be resolved so that there's no inconsistency? Great question. Uh, Ms. Sanchez asked about the accounting error. Uh, on the next page, you have to explain any differences that are material. So we have a line in there explaining uh, the, the accounting error. And then for the 17-18 one, it is, an, it is the appropriate amount. So, great question. So, we flagged it in there for them, or we let them know what it was, and then we corrected it for 17. Great question. Okay. Follow up question? And then the one where it was like 2,000, it was 44,000. How does that affect the campus? As far as does that mean we're not budgeting, we're not projecting very well? Yeah, those are great questions. Asking about the discrepancy between it, uh, the 121,000, that's just the minimum you have to spend. You can't go under that. If you go over that, great, you are providing services, but you have to at least hit that hit that minimum. So you don't want to be under, you can be over. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, really quickly through the, through the SOC one, uh, same goals, uh, CAS scores, positive environment, parental engagement, uh, a couple of pieces on our greatest progress. Uh, the the SEC campus had a very low suspension rate, uh, which was fantastic. Uh, all of our students uh, increased on average up by 11 points in ELA and 17 in math. Uh, our students who are classified as uh, socioeconomically disadvantaged, they grew ELA by 22% and in math by 27%. So that's what the LCAP is meant to do to acknowledge how you work on your subgroups. Uh, a greatest need for us uh, is our English learners. So our English learners, uh, their ELA score actually declined by seven points, uh, while all the other uh, subgroups maintained or increased. So it's a focus for us at our uh, all of our campuses, but especially at our SOC campus, for our uh, our English learners. And a performance gap. A performance gap is tell me what where are the gap between your high kids and your low kids. The, the biggest one for us uh, is our. Our Hispanic and Latino students at the SOC campus are two levels below, or have, are suspended at a rate much higher than the other students. So the positive behavior intervention supports that we're doing at Saddleback, we will also do SOC to ensure that um, positive behavior consequences as well as uh, any, any negative ones are commiserate across the board. Really quickly here, um, it's hard to see, but we put in a, a table for all of our significant subgroups to show what kind of growth they made uh, in, in English language arts and mathematics. This is where we identify that uh, in even, uh, I'll kind of narrative for you, in math, our English learner students only went up by three points. They went up, yes, but they only went up by three points. Our students with disabilities went up by 28 points. So huge shout out to our Scholar Academy team. Um, our students, our Hispanic students went up by 19 points. So we want to make sure that all of our students are um, rising. Same thing with our, our monies uh, that were spent as it was Saddleback. 25,000 budgeted, 23,642 was actually spent. For the, uh, um, the SC campus, a huge shout out as always. Uh, it's ADA and average daily attendance rate over 98%. Again, that helps us get funding and kids to the seat when, when they're there every day. We have budgeted 50000 for this. Uh, this is the one where Saddleback has budgeted 5000 So it should have been much closer to this amount. So that's what we budgeted 50000 and we spent about 65000 So that's where uh, Saddleback found accounting errors. At SOC, uh, one of the things that we want to focus on is the number of parties. Uh, we, we've got um, a great attendance component in terms of being in the full day, but tardies are still a little bit high, so we want to focus on, on bringing them down. Uh, again, you know, in terms of how much we spent or budget, about 3000 spent about 4800 so again, right in that, in that range. Um, a, a large one that we are focusing on in, in all of our LCAPs is the Parent Advisory Council. So two of our goals, our one's around a welcoming learning environment and one is around parent engagement. So having this advisory council is very important for us to get parent voices heard, to increase transparency uh, and accountability. Uh, really quickly, in terms of where we are at uh, for the SOC campus, our 
students overall, uh, the overall average in ELA is 87%, and our students uh, who are socioeconomic disadvantaged are at 83%. Obviously, that is 4%, 4% but those are very close. And we're very proud of the effort that uh, the SOC campus has done. Uh, as we mentioned uh, earlier with Saddleback, positive behavior intervention and support uh, is very important for us. Uh, the, again, the advisory council uh, is one thing that we're going to do to continue the accountability, and that is our SOC. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. We got questions first. We can't clap yet. Any questions from the um, audience? The board? You had a page that had all the campuses side by side, right? Was that, I'm sorry? Yeah, I, saw, I thought I saw a page that had all the campuses side by side as they compared to each other. Is that in here? Uh, no, no, not, not, for, not, for, uh, uh, not for that. There is a different presentation that I'm going to show. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, <clears throat> moving on to number 10, approve the local control accountability plan for Oxford Preparatory Academy, Saddleback Valley, as part of the local control funding formula School districts, county offices of education, and charter schools are required to develop, adopt, and annually update a three-year local control and accountability plan beginning on July 1, 2014. The LCAP is required to identify goals and measures progress for student subgroups across multiple performance indicators. Do we need to oh, are we making a oh, No, I think she's still on the LCAP, right? She's still on the LCAP, right? Uh huh. That's the one. Okay, so this is really uh, important to us. We really take the parent survey seriously. We really look at it. We dive into it. We look at all the, the questions and answers. So, what do we do well? This is an average of our three campuses. So, 98% of parents agree that. Uh, OPA has made you aware that you can participate in school leadership teams. 97.5% of you also agree that we have provided you with ample opportunities to be involved in the school. So one thing we do really well in the organization is let you know that we need your help uh, and there are, there are places for you to help. A huge shout out to our professors. 97% across all the campuses agree that OPA professors care about their kids. So the huge, huge, huge. 97% of you feel that your child is welcome at OBA, and 96 agree that the collegiate theme is prevalent. So we want your help, we let you know that you're going to be help, we care about your kids, uh, and your kids are going to college. Now, <laughs> where do we need to grow? Now again, this is all relative, but the other ones you saw are 98, 96%. These are in the high 80s. 89%, the school effectively communicates my child's academic progress and behavior. So that tells us we need to tweet the progress report system, uh, and, and more often, you know, where your kids are can be supported. 89% uh, my child receives challenging standards-based work. That gives the teacher's license to push your kids even harder, uh, to bring up their rigor, so the teachers will be happy about that. Um, OPA provides me information about grade level standards. That probably goes hand in hand with the two above that, what the standards are, how you can push your kid above it. Um, and then 88% my child's social and emotional needs are being met. So uh, we know that we need to do additional work on that. Um, we have lead teachers from all campuses involved in a PLUS program uh, that is going to bring some more social and emotional support to campuses. And as Mr. Uh, Diaz was uh, referencing, uh, what needs consistency? So the first line there is the school facility is clean and well maintained. Uh, Chino and SOC parents really agree with that. Saddleback, not so much. So that's good input from us, uh, for us, that we wouldn't necessarily know that the parents felt that way about the Saddleback campus, but it's, it's for us to reflect and then change our practices. Uh, the second one, OPA keeps me informed and updated about school events. Chino, 99% of parents agree. Saddleback, 94% of parents agree. SOC, 87% of parents agree. So there's a gap between Chino and Saddleback and then SOC. So how do we bridge that? How do we as leaders look back and be reflective and say, we need to do a better job? Behavior standards are high at OPA, 99% uh, for Chino. Let me just get this out of the way. This wasn't like Chino just put all 100s on everything. Uh, this has been pretty consistent for the last for the last few years. But 99% at Chino, behavior standards are high. 87% at SOC and 92 at Saddleback. So we want to kind of, again, iron that out. 
Uh, and a large one for us is the bottom one, discipline issues are dealt with in an appropriate manner. Uh, only 89% at Chino, um, under 80% at SOC, and at Saddleback, 72%. So when we as leaders, you know, hear, hear your concerns, um, don't just think it, it's, it's going in one ear or out the other, um, but it's really important that you fill out the parent survey so that it's not just one parent standing up at a parent meeting, it's as a collective force letting us know there's an issue. And again, we do take this seriously, we do crunch the data. So this is part of the LCAP process and the LCFF. So continue filling out the surveys, continue letting us know where we can grow. Um, and so we appreciate you guys taking the time to fill out the survey. That's it. Okay. Okay. So can we get a motion to approve the local control accountability plan for Oxford Preparatory Academy Saddleback Valley? A motion. It's been moved. Second? I'll second. We got a tie. Mm -hmm. Is this going to be Naveen? Yes. That's what going next to the next one. We have a motion and it's been seconded. All those, anybody have any more discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, it's passed. Approve local accountability plan for Oxford Preparatory Academy, South Orange County. You've already done that, so we're good. Can I get a motion to approve the local control accountability plan for Oxford Preparatory Academy, South Orange County? I'll make a motion. Okay, it's been moved. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Okay, we've passed. Moving on to number 13. Approval of updated merit pay and discretionary bonus policy. The Oxford Preparatory Academy Board consistently updates policies to ensure they are upholding their fiduciary responsibility to the stakeholders. The merit pay and discretionary bonus policy provides certificated and classified staff the opportunity to receive additional compensation, merit pay, in excess of base pay pursuant to the school's charter petition. Now it's the Mr. Crow show. Here you go. Uh, so what you have in front of you, uh, all of this has already been approved except for the components in yellow. So we just changed the name from merit pay policy to merit pay and discretionary bonus just to make it very clear uh, what we are asking for. Under student academic achievement, we just add a clarifying component that grade level teachers will receive the bonus uh, if their classroom average falls above the indicated uh, benchmarks. And we just had a few little minor grammar components to make it uh, even more clear. So this is the updated merit pay and discretionary bonus policy. We took one piece of it off, and it's going to be on the next one. It's the coordinator stipend, so it was more in line with the stipend, not merit pay, so we took that off. Um, but one of the things that, that I would uh, like the board to consider, um, if you see at the top, uh, the monies are to be allocated in December of the subsequent school year to returning teachers. Um, but in this uh, zone where we're not sure what's going to happen with the Chino campus, uh, I would like to ask that the monies that would be paid out to returning Chino teachers in December are instead paid out um, uh, to them this month or as soon as we can process it. So to keep the SOC and Saddleback on the same schedule to go in December, but for the Chino uh, staff to have it paid effective immediately. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the updated merit pay and discretionary bonus policy? Would you also like it in the motion regarding Please. paying Chino immediately? as soon as possible, and we'll keep the other two schools on the, the usual schedule, be paid to December. Okay, do I uh, have a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay, do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Is Madam there any? Chair, in, yes. We have a, two speakers on the side. Two speakers? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, let's go ahead and have the speaker. Okay, first up, Jennifer Garrett. Thank you for approving that. I did want to speak about the merit pay policy because as much as so many of us would like to be returning, um, we've had to make really, really hard decisions. And um, so I was going to say that so much goes on at the school. Um, so many extra things are done. Um, and I just wanted to speak on behalf of many of our staff. We, I know we got to speak to uh, Ms. Garner uh, a week or so ago regarding these things, and I greatly appreciated that time. Um, and I know that Mr. Pro has listened to everything we've said. Um, and that is basically what I was asking, was that um, hopefully 
uh, my contract ends on the 30th. Many have ended already, and just not forgetting that because it has been the status quo to pay it uh, October or December, and it didn't happen this year. Um, and we just want to make sure we we have worked so hard this year through so much turmoil, so much going on. But our kids, as you heard, have ne never knew that. We cried behind closed doors. We strategized behind closed doors. Um, and every day was a great day for our students. Um, so thank you um, for that. Secondly, I did want to also give my thanks to the board. Um, I can't believe the 18 months, um, but the last six months with all of you has been a whirlwind. And I, these last eight months have been amazing. And I did want to thank Mr. Vesti for stepping in and leading our board with dignity and truth. I'm sorry for what he has endured. Um, no one deserves that. And Mr. Diaz, you are so warm and caring. And again, you rocked our eighth grade promotion. <laughs> Mrs. Carver and Ms. Barner, thank you for coming in when you didn't have to. Um, thank you for your expertise and guidance. And um, I also want to thank Ms. Pasco and Ms. Adley for your hard work. But um, I just hope that you're all appreciated moving forward. I know your intentions have always been for the organization as a whole. Um, Garrett and Cindy um, have held everything together, but especially Garrett, I don't know what we would have done without him stepping up and um, taking, so Cindy knew that she didn't have to be here and Stacy stepping in. Um, and our whole staff, um, our kids never knew the angst or turmoil. We cried, like I said, and we bonded. But our leadership is a huge part of that. And I knew so crying, because every time I look at him, I cry. But um, Andrew, <clears throat> I can't say enough about your leadership and mentoring. You have a gift that not many people have, and I'll be forever changed for knowing you and working with you. I'm thankful for all I've learned and experienced over the last four years. I can only pray that my next teaching experience allows me to continue to grow and work with people equally as passionate and committed to teaching children. I will continue to advocate for school choice, and I can't wait to see how the organization moves forward. I'm so excited that I've decided on the appeal. I may not work for OPA, but just like our kids, um, once a champion, always a champion, and I'll be here to support in any way I can. Um, and I just wish everyone good luck. Thank you. Right. Um, I first want to offer, first of all, I want to thank you all for all your hard work for everything that you've done for our whole organization. I know that everything that you put in, all the time that you put in, please know that it's appreciated by all the teachers, all the parents, all the kids. We appreciate all your hard work in making the tough choices that you had to make and will probably continue to make. Uh, so with that said, I do want to appreciate also your uh, openness to to hearing from parents, hearing from staff, because in past boards we were always told to, you know, maybe not told, but there was a fear in approaching board members and approaching upper administration um, with certain things. And one of the things I that's on the agenda is the merit pay. Um, one of the things that has happened in the past is that teachers who have um, done so much for the school whether it's Excellence Academy or you know test scores or coaching or whatever it is, if they ended up not working at OPA the following school year, all that hard work seemed to have been for naught because if they weren't here in that October, November, or December when that bonus was um, given, it was just forgotten. Oh, they're not here. And I hope that moving forward that doesn't happen um, because these teachers work really hard to provide the kids with an amazing experience. And I just hope that it's recognized. And I know for the Chino campus, a lot of our teachers have to make the tough decision to not move forward, or sorry, to not stay with OPA, unfortunately. And I hope that those teachers' hard work is not, is not forgotten. And also with the other campus, you know, there are hardworking teachers in SOC and Saddleback as well. And those teachers choose to not come back for whatever reason for the following school year. I hope that their hard work is also recognized and not just forgotten when December comes. All right, thank, thank you. you.
And, and I think that's an excellent point. What is our policy on that as far as if a teacher doesn't come back, do they still receive a check for the, the services that they provided uh, the year before? Yeah, so they, they do not. So once they're no longer an employee, um, you can't give them a check unless they kind of come on as an independent consultant or, or something of the sort. Uh, but if you will, uh, we can tag team, and if I can do the I can do the stipend policy as well, you can see how some of that is addressed if you would like to pivot into that. Let's go ahead and wrap this one up with the, we have a, a motion in a second. Um, we have discussion. Right, what discussion. Is, what have you seen out there? What is the typical standard? We usually do it at the end of the school year. At the end yeah. of the school year. Mm -hmm. what and that way everybody gets set and those that right. choose to leave after that, then they're already gone, but like, you can't give it to them. Once they're gone, they're gone. Right. right. You can't just go back. Well, what prevents us from moving right. in that direction? One of the complicating factors with the mayor paying discretionary bonus yes, bonus policy uh, is when we get a piece of mm -hmm. So this has always been done. We never received the old California science test uh, results until August, so you couldn't do it. Um, and so for right now, for example, we still do not have any scores for SOC or Saddleback. So we we're at a time of when we get the scores back prevents us from doing it before June 30th. Is that the only category that we wouldn't be able to do? Uh, yes, the and that's the only one on here is the, stu yeah. the two student academic achievements uh, and the above and beyond, which we could at a later meeting uh, amend to have that be in June. Mm -hmm. uh, but the student academic achievements are the only ones right now that we paid on December. And the professional development support is that one also? Because I don't. Okay, so we have above and beyond and an amount. Professional yeah. development support doesn't necessarily have. No, that would be on a case by case basis. If someone wanted to pursue their their education and, and Oxford felt that it was a value to them, okay. it would be like a reimbursement piece. Um, what kind of feedback? Do, I know that some of this was based on feedback we got from the teachers. Yeah. So, so uh, have we, they seen what you're proposing? What were their thoughts? We sent this to uh, uh, administration and our lead teachers uh, this week, uh, and they gave uh, a bunch of feedback. More so on the employee stipend policy. That was the, the genesis of um, separating it from the mayor pay uh, and having its own. That, that came from the lead teacher saying, hey, we get it, we understand that there's mayor pay based on test scores, but we coach, we do Essence Academy. And so the genesis of the other one is, is from the lead teachers speaking on behalf of the teaching staff. So um, th th we have consulted uh, our, our and, leaders. And that addresses it. Okay. I'm good. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor of approving the updated merit pay and discretionary bonus policy and paying Chino uh, teachers out as soon as possible, say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, it passes. Approval of employee stipend policy. The stipend policy provides school site employees the opportunity to receive additional compensation for involvement in school activities, clubs, sports, pursuant to the school's charter petition, Mr. Crump. Yeah, so this is a, um, what you're, we have in front of you uh, is a stipend policy. Uh, this um, will actually, the, the, the date will be, oh, excuse me, this, this, this one uh, will be again paid out by the end of the school year, so we don't have the same uh, things before. The first one on there, the school-wide activities coordinator, that has already been approved uh, as part of the mayor pay policy. It was just separated from mayor pay to put it on the, the stipend. Um, a, as a reminder, uh, the site administration will have discretion as to what school-wide coordinators they need. Uh, again, associated student body, uh, the student success team, uh, gifts and talents education. That's already been approved. The two additions, uh, the second one, coaches and advisors. This came up uh, in the first round of this process back in December or uh, January, that teachers wanted coaches and advisors stipends on there. Uh, after going back and forth, um, we tried to come up with a unified uh, kind of you know, stipend policy, uh, but at you know, one campus, there's Odyssey of the Mind, another campus is Math Olympiad, at one campus, basketball is a huge sport, at another it's not. So what you have in front of you is that there's tiers, and the site administration will have to decide on the tiers, uh, and then provide that in advance to the executive director or designee to be able to approve that. There'll be a tier one, head coach would be $1,500, 
uh, their assistant coach or coaches will be $500. And tier two, a, a program that does not meet as much and have the same time commitments will be $750 for the head coach, $250 for the assistant coach and or uh, advisors. So that's a coach and advisor piece. Again, all these will need to be approved by the side administration and then for up to the executive director. And the final component on the stipend policy is Excellence Academy. Um, background, uh, teachers have always done Excellence Academy. And the payout has been um, a variable every year as to when they get it and the amount they get it. Uh, and in talking to our teachers, the amounts has, have been different at each campus. So this was our attempt to um, thank our teachers for, for what they do, a uh, stipend of $1,000. At Saddleback, this would have been 14 teachers, or 14 teachers would get it. Uh, as you'll see, 16 teachers would get it, and at Chino, 20 teachers um, completed Excellence Academy. So, what we're asking for is to approve the stipend policy um, with the, the activities coordinators that's already been approved, the coaches and advisors, and the Excellence Academy. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve the employee stipend policy? I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Um, are any of the arts uh, reflected in here? Uh, that would be in the coaches and advisors. So okay. There was right. a so they'd be considered an advisor. Correct. Correct. Would that be tier one? That would be at the, based on on, on the on, level. On the yeah, level. Well, that might be. That's what C might not be. Got it. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. All those in favor of approving the employee stipend policy, say aye. 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 Any any noes? Abstentions? Okay. It passes. Moving on to number 15, to approve the updated credit card policy, the Board of Directors is committed to ensuring Oxford Prep maintains relevant and transparent fiscal policies. The credit card policy established the reasonable credit limits and purchasing procedures for organizational credit cards. The organization maintains credit cards for actual and necessary expenses incurred by employees and officers in the performance of their duties when a purchase order is neither practical nor possible, including when traveling to complete business. The updated policy increases credit limits as recommended by the executive administration. Kerry? Kerry no, still here. Oh, hi, Kerry. Oh, wait, how did you get over there? Because she was here earlier. I saw you over here. Okay. I'm going to need, need a moment. To okay. Um, it. Okay. Hold on. We're going to close and we have to reopen the computer. Um, yeah, I'm still painting. I, I can start this until okay. it gets it's, uh, loaded back up. Okay. Um, Mrs. Thread will give much more detail on the change to the credit card policy. Um, this has already been approved. Uh, what we are doing is updating the uh, amounts. For it, uh, that's on the front page. You, there will be an updated amount, and on the second page, the second page, Carrie will also tell you what that is. So, Carrie, go ahead, take it away. Hello. Sorry. First of all, thank you, Mr. Crow and the board, for letting me uh, come to you remotely tonight, so I could just go a little bit closer uh, to home. Uh, we wanted to Andrew and I. Um, and the executive director and some executive directors spent some time accepting all the credit card policies over the past several months to really make sure that this policy was as accurate and as it could be. Um, and we noticed that the sites as well as the executive director and the managing director needed an increase. Uh, we're asking tonight, unfortunately, the, the policy I'm in front of you is not the correct policy that I would like you to see. I'm asking that the executive director and the managing director have limits of 25,000 and that each site have 10,000. When going through the credit card policies, we know the sites, especially Saddleback, incur a lot of expenses at Home Depot. Um, they all incur postage expenses, printing, um, all of their PR, their IT, their communications. Um, a lot of our purchases are done on Amazon. For example, we just bought books for both Saddleback and um, SOC. Um, all the field trips, so we have our champ camp going on right now. All the champ camp buses, as well as the um, the field trips themselves, needed to be used with the credit card. Um, events at the campuses, so anytime that we use special events for the kids, or the credit cards are being to be used. Both office supplies. Code here is our champion village software that is also an incurred monthly expense. And of course, um, we incur special education uh, expenditures as well. 
As executive administration, as you know, travel has been a huge expense over these last several months, um, as well as their trainings, like the C, uh, CBO training and the leadership training. Our storage facilities are paid by credit card, as well as any truck rentals. And as we know, those are going to and hopefully not increase, but they have the potential to increase. Um, just looking over so you have a little bit of an idea over the past three months, in May, Chino spent on their credit card around 7,000, SOC was 12, and Saddleback was seven. April, Chino again, seven, SOC was seven, Saddleback was four and a half thousand. In March, that's when a majority of the travel took place, Chino was about 15,000, SOC was 15,000, and Saddleback was about 7.5 thousand. So that is uh, the increase we're asking for there. And the other little change that I thought we talked about the last time, but it didn't get um, written out, was on page two, you'll see a slash where it says the coordinator should maintain a log of all credit card use. Really, that's not something that is feasible. We look to online for an online accounting of where credit cards are being used. We have encountered fraud in the past. That's another reason why the executive director and the managing director need to have equal amounts, because when one has fraud, we're able to rely on the other. Mm. How often do we do uh, purchase. PO purchase orders? I mean, I'm used to, I'm coming from an organization that uses a lot more purchase orders and not as much credit cards. We do do a lot of purchase orders, but mostly those are for credit card purchases. Um, anything that I can send into Charter Impact, I do. Um, but a lot of these IT companies, a lot of Amazon, as you know, doesn't allow you to pay by check. So a lot of these expenditures that we see are only feasible by credit cards. Amazon for Business doesn't do. Amazon for Business doesn't do purchase orders, or are we not using that program because it's better to use the Prime or? Because uh, you can use a business account with with Amazon. Okay. I don't know the answer why we're not using that particular specific part of Amazon. I don't know if Mr. Crow can. Okay. To that. Not a big deal. So in the past, we use Prime to get this to our site as soon as possible. Right. Um, how does this compare to what you've seen? I don't know. I just I I would probably like to table it since she said this is not the accurate one, uh, especially when we're looking at a twenty-five thousand dollar amount. Because I thought before the board had to approve any purchases over twenty-five thousand dollars. Um, so I, I don't think this is to this is to allow them to make a one-time purchase. It's just to increase. Yeah, but is it monthly or is it? Is it? Is this monthly? It's a monthly. So basically, um, when I get the credit card bill, it's delineated by each credit card. I have to support give backup for each one of those um, credit card statements and each item. And so the twenty-five thousand is just the limit for the month. And that still gets approved. It used to get approved by Mr. Vesti as well as Ms. Chapman. Um, What's your Can we ask Andy his input on what he's seen from other schools? Uh, yeah, the size of this, the size of the school is uh, twenty-five thousand, especially the way everything's become electronic payments and everything. Twenty-five thousand limit is not that much, um, and I appreciate the concern about it. But it, on top of that, it's the, the team does a pretty good job. They have to collect uh, receipts for every single purchase, and that's reconciled back. And the and the, and the end payment has to be made by a check to Amazon or or whatever, or for the credit card company anyway. And, and that always is reconciled and so we look at all individual receipts so the limit is not out of line um, at all I think for ten thousand dollars for a school um, that's what it was ten thousand right that that seems actually pretty um, limited uh, limiting for some of the schools to buy uh, a lot of the things they do the twenty five thousand if miss if the direct directors are uh, paying for some of the field trips and other kinds of things on that credit card then I I can see it but and and it's almost sometimes it's even better to put them there than put them on the schools because then you have a lot more people making purchases rather than having to go through a uh, Makes sense. somebody that is authorized approver than you uh, that you vetted yourself. 
but there's no there's no right answer for this, it, but except to say that schools need credit cards. There's no doubt about it. That's yeah, true. I think it's it's to it's to ensure that we're limiting the chance of fraud, and to that right. we say we have multiple layers of checks and balances, starting with carry, and then charter impact, and then our auditors. We have two of them. So I think I feel like we have enough tight channels to capture any kind of fraud should that occur again. Look, so, and, and, and to address the fraud piece, um, I just received my new card you know, today because uh, there was fraud for $7 for Lyft, uh, and there were other small things. So, you know, uh, Carrie and the team do a great job of flagging it right away. So um, uh, we feel confident, again, as Ms. Sally said, in the number of checks and balances. And not only that, the credit cards are held at the corporate office, right? They're not sitting in the campus. Okay. Yeah, okay. We did approve that last time where they are kept them in our states. Um, Any time that it does, a person or a chancellor needs the card, it needs to be returned within one day. So all of those will still be our policy. It's just um, increasing the amount and taking so away the but is this the current selling one, penal law. We they said they're raising twenty five thousand. Okay, twenty five thousand is going to the and, and, the managing, and the managing director. And ten, ten. side chancellors. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that accurate? Oh, I thought it was correct. correct. Okay, yeah. so from five to ten for the site chancellors. Yeah. And she had mentioned that if one of your credit cards has to be for X period of time, yeah, uh, I'm now and finding that at month. least about twice a year, my corporate card is flagged with something and I have to wait. So that's not, that's actually becoming very common. Okay. Too common. Are you good? I'm good. Okay, do I have a motion to approve the updated credit card policy? I'll make a motion. Okay, it's been a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, uh, do we have any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, that passes. Okay, moving on to number 18. Uh, consideration of at will employment agreement with Denise Pasco. Denise Pasco was named the interim executive director of OPA at, on December 6, 2016, and uh, her term expires on June 30th, 2017, this Friday. Um, the uh, the bad news is is that uh, we lose her as of Friday as our interim executive director. The good news is is that South Orange County gets her back as their chancellor, and I know how much they love her and how much they're looking forward to that. Uh, Mr. Uh, Diaz. Well, just to, just to kind of expand on that a bit, um, her responsibilities, well, actually, let me back up a moment. There was three of us <laughs> making lots of decisions when we turned to Ms. Pasco and we asked her to step in to the big mess uh, that, w that we were faced with. Um, she didn't shy away. She didn't, um, oh God, there was nothing negative about it. She's like, absolutely, what can I do? And she hit the ground running. Um, and we owe her a, a huge debt of gratitude for, for stepping into that role. And so um, this is uh, her uh, experience with SOC, uh, the fact that we still don't have a chancellor in Saddleback Valley, her time that she spent in Saddleback Valley, helping to get that all straightened out. Um, we're gonna be depending on her just as heavily in this role as we did as uh, as the interim director, and we really are really thankful for her, for her continued service to OPA. Thank you. Do I have a motion to? Yeah, mic's, mic's on. Her mic's four not on. You have four speakers on the side. Yes. Regarding this item, we have. We have four speakers. Okay. Sorry, my. Okay, can I get a motion on the floor before we go to our speaker? Yes, okay. However you want to do it, I just want to make sure. Okay, you thank you. Me. Do I have a motion to approve an at will employment agreement for Denise Pasco as the Chancellor for South Orange County for the 2017 2018 school year? I'll make a motion. Okay, do I have a second? A second. Okay, now the speakers. Okay. First up is Naz Najumi. Okay, um, 
said looks perfect. It's okay. So I have this whole thing. I'll just read it anyway because I'm here. I've been here forever. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, I was over at SSC, and once the traffic died down, um, we drove down, a bunch of us drove down here to be with our Chino family because, you know, we do care about you guys as much as you guys might not think we do. We genuinely do. I'm so exhausted, sorry. As I was mentioning earlier, um, we are an organization, we are one family. We have our ups and we have our downs, but we are a united foot. We've all chosen to be at this school, to be part of this school because of our kids. <laughs> and I mean, that's the thread that binds all of us. We, we genuinely love our kids and we want the best for them. And for months, we've stood by Denise, and we've stood by Andrew and the board, and we've looked to you all to take us to like, the next step to help you guys, because we do care. And through all the chaos and the tears and, and the hopes and the uncertainty, we are just waiting for a moment where we just had some kind of a stability. And tonight, you were granted chairman position and Andrew, congratulations for your interim, I mean for your managing director, but it does break my heart that Denise really, I mean she did stand up and take on something that was just disastrous. She took on a, a giant mess and I just wish that people would recognize the fact that she genuinely was an amazing executive director and they were in charge for many years. I mean, I'm excited because I get you back, but it's a giant loss for the entire organization because you have so much integrity. And you made me a promise when you first stepped on our store that I pretty much said, I, I trust you and I genuinely think you kept up with everything. And thank you so much, Denise, for everything. And we love you and we appreciate you. And no matter what anyone says, you really are like the best. And it is a loss, and I wish that you guys were there. I know it's only a decision that's made, but she really is amazing. Thank you. At the Saddleback Valley location, Brianna Walker. Thank you. Hi. Um, thank you for letting me speak, and um, thank you to the board. I spoke with many of you via email or phone call throughout this week. Um, with some of my frustration and um, and I'm just I'm sorry I'm emotional also but for different reasons um, and it's sad I, I don't want to be here so I apologize that I'm even here anyways but um, but I feel like I have no other choice but to stand up in front of everyone and clear my name um, I attended Saddleback's town hall meeting last Monday and I was so excited to go I had be getting ready. I had a couple friends call and they were concerned. They didn't know Denise Pascal and um, were nervous of whether or not she was a leader for our schools. And I recommended everyone give her a chance and an opportunity to speak and to have her voice heard. Um, I feel so stupid now, to be honest with you, because within 10 minutes of sitting down, I had Denise insinuate that I was a liar in front of my friends, my children's friends, my friends, my fellow parents at the school, my teachers, my kids' teachers, my administration, in front of a board member who did not speak up, who did not say a single word when that was said, when my name, my reputation was on the line, not a single person stood up and said anything. I was shocked, I was angry, I was disappointed, and to be frank, Ms. Pascal, I was disgusted. I sent my children to Oxford to learn different things, from academics to socialization to values. And I would hope that when I trust my teacher, my teachers at my school to teach values to my children, that the director of our school would have those same values. The next day, my children were honored with champ awards. And I was embarrassed to show up. I stood in the back of the NPR because I was afraid of what people thought of me because of lies that were told by you, Ms. Pasco. 
I literally hid in the back, ashamed. But I will let you know, I didn't have to stay ashamed for long because people started coming up and they started asking me questions. The questions that I didn't want to be asked that made me feel uncomfortable because I had to tell them the truth, that I was not a liar. And that conversation did happen and you did tell me to post stuff on Facebook. I did not lie to my school. I did not lie to my, to my, my friends, to my kids, parents, their, their friends, parents. I did not lie. I am scared standing up here because I know you have a very large audience of wonderful parents. I have no problems with these parents who love you. And I'm sure that you have been wonderful to SOC. I, that, without a doubt, there are some amazing parents there who love you with all their heart. And I, I cheer them on. Unfortunately, I have a different experience with you. And I want my voice to be heard because you had your voice heard in front of my whole school. Ma'am. You have never reached your time is up. Excuse mm-hmm. me. No. No, I just want to end this. I'll end this. But I, I would like to point out that you have never visited our campus. You said that the board restricted you from visiting our campus because you were focused on Chino. You do not give, if you do not talk to parents for feedback, you do not talk to our teachers. And you have never communicated with our campus, leaving us to have to communicate together as an organization. It is really sad what happened at that town hall meeting. It should never have happened. I should not have to stand here. And I hope going forward that we can find an executive director who has more integrity. Thank you. Erica Shorty. Hi, good evening. Um, I have very different remarks prepared um, than what I'm going to say now. Um, I was not at the Saddleback town hall meeting, so I can't speak to that. Um, That's really hard to follow. I can say that as a parent who's had frustrating experiences, um, I understand that frustration, regardless of where it comes from. We all want leaders that we can trust and that we believe in and that we believe are really truly listening to us. And it's heartbreaking for me to um, hear a parent experience that because I think all of us at one time or another with this organization have have experienced that in one way or another. Um, What I would like to say, um, now that my speech is kind of, um, well, I wanted to thank the board for recognizing the importance of extending um, Mrs. Pasco's contract as interim ED, um, because we've all seen her leadership during this horrible storm. We haven't seen her much at SFC either. well, obviously now we're coming back, but she is not, um, she's been, I know, very focused on working with all of you and working um, with our authorizers and working with legal teams to um, to save Chino. That's been everyone's first and foremost priority, and rightly so. Um, the future of all of our schools is at risk right now. Um, Chino is the most immediate, and of course we want nothing more than to see Chino be saved, and I am personally so relieved and happy to hear that that appeals process is going to move forward. That is so important, um, most importantly for the children on this campus, but for everyone, for charter schools in the state of California, um, there's a lot writing on this. It's most important for the kids, but there's a lot more writing on it as well. Um, I have experienced and seen Denise Pasco's um, integrity and her commitment to ethics firsthand, as I know all of you have as well, um, so I'm a little perplexed, um, but again, thrilled that she will be coming back to our campus um, as a chancellor. I, I do have some questions about what that's going to mean for our organization moving forward. If we do not have an interim executive director at the helm, I know Mr. Pro in his new position, congratulations, very well deserved as managing director um, is going to have his hands full with all of the responsibilities that go with that job as we um, have seen tonight. Again, he's all things to all people. Um, We need some leadership that is going to be able to um, communicate and continue the important work of maintaining and nurturing the relationships with our authorizers. That is one of the highest priorities 
of an executive director, so it concerns me at this critical time that we are moving forward with an appeal for Chino, that that position will be vacant. So maybe there are plans for this that I'm unaware of, but um, I think that that needs to be addressed and communicated, especially um, in, in the spirit of transparency. I think we'd all like to know where we're going next. I know you're gonna tell me about the time. Thank you, I appreciate your time. Caitlin Walsh. She has to be on her. She won't text me. And we're finished. Okay, thank you. Any board discussion? You know, I just. I'm SOC. I need this one. Just one moment. Okay. Is as someone who worked hand in hand with Denise Pasco and Andrew Crow, they have been the most transparent and honest people. I would hope that everyone in all of these rooms could give a big round of applause to everything we and for you to be valued consistently on this SOC campus. I just, um, I have to say thank you to Denise. Um, Amen. You know, over these last few months, I've learned so much from you. I've learned what integrity is more than what I knew. I learned what hard work, despite opposition, is. And I just want to thank you, Denise. You are just an amazing person. Um, this has been a difficult journey. I, I understand what you all, all are going through. Um, I had a different chance to work with Denise on financials and on, hey, I want to pick your brain on this because I come from corporate America and this is different. Um, and she's always been there to either answer or research. So thank you. That's all I had to say. Any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor of approving being an outwell employment agreement with Denise Pasco as the Chancellor for South Orange County for the 2017-18 school year. Please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? I abstain. Okay. It passes. Thank you. Going on to number 17, approved cyberbullying prevention policy. The Board of Directors is committed to providing a safe, positive, productive, and nurturing educational environment for all students and members of the OPA community. This policy provides families with background information on cyberbullying, disciplinary rules, prevention strategies, and links to helpful resources. Mr. Crow. Yeah, we dealt with a lot of this uh, this year. Uh, not just this year, but... Uh, social media. Uh, just the first thing on the record, uh, we do have an anti-bullying policy. Uh, it's not explicit. Uh, it's wrapped up into our anti-discrimination, uh, unlawful harassment, retaliation policy. So that'll be on us to make sure that's a little more clearly communicated. I know probably it's easy to search for an anti-bullying policy, so we'll make that a little more transparent. Uh, we wanted to add, in addition to the anti-bullying policy, this, uh, this is the cyber bullying policy. We do have an anti-bullying policy. It's wrapped up into our anti-discrimination, unlawful harassment, and retaliation policy that we will make sure it is shared out. Cyberbullying is bullying that takes place using any electronic communication technology, including but not limited to cell phones, computers, tablets. Um, things we want to highlight for cyberbullying is that under this, uh, our policy, pretending to be another person by creating a fake online profile on Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, any other social media, or taking an embarrassing or sexually explicit photo of a student and or sharing without permission would fall under our cyberbullying policy as well as potential penal goals. On the second page, uh, just a, a reminder, cyberbullying is prohibited at Oxford Prep, uh, and, and students who um, engage in cyberbullying, even off campus, are um, open to, to, uh, to uh, punishment on campus. Um, the bullying uh, is defined as uh, severe or pervasive conduct that can, can be reasonably predicted this? to have the effect of one more the following. You put a student in fear of their personal property, uh, you cause them to have interference with his or her academics, um, or you have a detrimental effect on their physical or mental health. Even if a student commits cyberbullying off campus, they can, students can be uh, held liable for their actions on campus if wow. the cyberbullying disrupts their instructional environment. 
So um, this is just to memorialize uh, the cyberbullying component uh, to let parents know that we take this very seriously, uh, that uh, between our, our leadership, our admin, and our uh, IT team, uh, we've worked in conjunction with uh, law enforcement agencies on a number of occasions to ensure that students feel safe uh, and that you are protected at school and at home. So we ask the board to approve the cyberbullying prevention policy. Okay, thank you. Do I have a motion to approve the cyberbullying prevention policy? I'll make a motion. Second? Second. Okay, we have a motion to second. Is there any discussion? Two, a couple quick questions, uh, Mr. Crow. Our students sign our, um, our use, our, our appropriate use policies for, and you know, our parents do as well. Is this now being incorporated into that as well? well this will be in the, in the parent handbook. So the, the technology gear will be separate, and this will be a part of the parent handbook. Wouldn't it be good to maybe incorporate some of this into the technology? No? Certainly, yeah. I mean, Certainly. And are we doing anything? I know, just to use an example, um, my son in Boy Scouts has to get this, go watch this video, do this test, do whatever to get his cyber chip. Are we doing anything to proactively educate the kids themselves? Yeah. Say, this is cyberbullying, this is not acceptable. What do we, we, we do? We have a cyber safety cop uh, uh, come on campuses. Um, that's our, our first component. Uh, our IT team has been very good in terms of uh, uh, flagging things for us to have conversations with kids. Uh, but no, this needs to be an increased uh, effort for us to, uh, to have frank conversations with parents and students. So that's why the cyberbullying policy, step one, and step two would be a lot of orientation for our kiddos. Okay, thank you. Is there any other discussion? Any other questions? Okay, all those in favor of approving our cyberbullying prevention policy, say aye. 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 Any nays? Abstentions? Okay, it passes. Moving on, we're almost there, people. We're almost. One. We're going to make one. it before midnight. <laughs> Stop saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to drive. So, sorry about that, Debbie. Number 18, approve law enforcement access to students on campus policy. The, this policy sets forth guidelines for OPA staff to follow in the event of a law enforcement officer, child protective services agent, or U.S. Immigration and Customs and Enforcement Agent requests information or access to students. Mr. Crow? Uh, yeah, the, the, there's a number of uh, starting points for why we have this. Uh, we want to clean up our policies. We want to ensure safety of everyone. Um, and a large one is uh, Ms. Pasco and I were at the one conference this year, I don't remember which one it was, uh, and then we went to a training on student rights, student records, um, and what to do if you have law enforcement. Uh, we actually had uh, attorneys come out and uh, give a presentation to all administrators, to office staff, to anybody that would potentially be the first point of contact for, for law enforcement. So this is just codifying uh, best practices. Um, uh, you know, essentially just articulates that uh, any time a police officer comes on campus that they would need to you know, be referred to the, to the chancellor or, or executive director, um, that the first thing that um, we, we would do is uh, verify the reason that they're there uh, and ensure that they are indeed a legitimate police officer. So uh, asking, you know, we can call your department, uh, we want to verify that uh, you are indeed acting in an official capacity. Um, a big one for parents to, to understand, uh, I'm just going to read this uh, word for word at the bottom of page one. Parental consent is not required in order for a law enforcement officer to arrest a minor student, nor is parental consent legally required for questioning a student on campus. In most cases, Oxford Prep will endeavor to notify parents when a law enforcement officer questions a student unless such notification may reasonably impede the law enforcement officer's investigation or may harm the student. Uh, for example, in cases of suspected child abuse or neglect by parents. So, um, you know, your child could be questioned on campus. Uh, um, we do everything in our power, obviously, let you know, but um, the, the, the officer can question your child on campus. Um, on the second page, if a law enforcement officer seeks to question a student, um, for site administration, for upper admin, the first thing we have to do is determine if questioning is appropriate. So if a law enforcement officer seeks only to question a student for issues unrelated to the school, uh, the responsible person may ask the officer to seek to question a student off campus. That's in our power to ask them to do this at home or another avenue if it's not related to the school or if it's not uh, an emergency. 
Um, an important note is that for students who, who uh, have an IEP, who have a disability, you have to provide accommodations during that question time. So whatever accommodations are in their IEP, you must also give them uh, when they are being questioned, if they are being questioned. On uh, page three, um, if a student is taken into custody, in some circumstances, law enforcement officers may need to remove the student from the school premises in order to conduct an investigation. If it is unclear why law enforcement officers seek to take a student into custody for questioning, the responsible person must request that the law enforcement officer provide an explanation for the removal. Officer prep needs this information to determine next steps and to notify the student's parents. Um, and then uh, a big delineation. If the law enforcement officer decides to take the student into custody because the student is a suspected victim of child abuse or neglect, it is the responsibility of the law enforcement officer to notify the student's parent. So in that case, it would not be on the school, it would be on the law enforcement agent. And then the, uh, the uh, two, two final things, or I guess one final thing I want to point out uh, is around uh, immigration and custom enforcement. Uh, this is a, a hot topic issue uh, in Southern California and, and a lot of places. So we are just uh, moralizing um, what we what the, our policy is. Um, on the final page, page five, um, Oxford Prep recognizes that ICE has a long-standing policy that will not conduct immigration enforcement activity at any sensitive location, which includes schools, without special permission by specific federal law enforcement officials and less urgent circumstances. So the Oxford Prep policy uh, would be to do not provide consent to enter. So Oxford Prep school staff should not get permission to enter the school or conduct a search without a warrant. Uh, if uh, the ICE officials have a warrant or court order to arrest someone on school campus, um, we would, the executive director, the admin team, the site administration would need to see that warrant in advance. Um, Oxford Prep staff must not provide information to ICE agents even in an emergency, without first discussing with legal counsel because of the harm that may come to the student due to this law. So in addition to memorializing what uh, we do when uh, a law enforcement official comes to the campus, uh, this also pertains to ICE, uh, and then just one other component that I want to make clear to the board and parents, uh, we do not give information over the phone to, to anybody. Uh, you, as, a, as a team, we can't identify who someone is over the phone. Uh, people have been very mad at us when they call and say, hey, I'm officer so-and-so, I'm this, that, or the other. We can't verify over the phone, so we ask them to meet in person, so we're doing everything in our power to protect your kids' privacy and safety, so we ask that the board uh, approve this law enforcement student access policy. Okay. okay, do I have a motion to approve the law enforcement access to students on campus policy? I have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? I do have a question. Um, ultimately, uh, ultimately, this is to protect a child. Should the officer have reason to believe that they are in danger and need to be questioned? And so, as a parent, I'm sure parents are out there thinking, "I don't want my child to be questioned." But this is not a random questioning. This is with purpose because of their safety. Correct. And and and, and we're talking about um, in. Just in, in, in the two years that I've been here, it's less than a handful of cases where, where this would come up. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions or discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. No? Abstentions? Okay, this passes. We, uh, we are going to pull the, uh, the uh, vendor bidding policy this evening. I guess that will be up here on our next agenda. I just want to remind everyone that um, as we... Uh, Stated coming out of um, closed session, uh, the board did direct our council to make an attempt at a settlement agreement with the Chino Valley Unified School District. Um, and I would imagine that if uh, the board of uh, Chino is going to hear um, anything regarding um, OPA, that uh, we would be able to do an email blast. Am I right? Uh, to the parents letting everyone know when and what time it's going to be. So uh, prayers continue, okay? And thank you all for hanging out. Uh, this evening, it's not a two-day board meeting. We actually made it through in one day. So do I have uh, a motion to adjourn? I motion. Second. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. <laughs> Noes? Abstentions? Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you.